a playlist original. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Back to the Blockbuster. My name is Gaius Bowling. I am two days off of celebrating my birthday. It's a very, very long weekend, and it's the most Monday of Mondays I can imagine. But I am very, very uh, happy to be recording today because um, we have a special guest on, and this is someone that is just like I think I just followed uh g reels and like i would see him like comment on certain stories that i would post and um i was just one day i was like hey like would you ever just like want to hop on our podcast and he was like yeah for sure so uh jackson thank you so much for being on and uh helping me out today with a lot of news <laughs> the pleasure is all mine thanks a lot for having me on no, no problem uh so uh tell everyone a little bit um about yourself because usually like when we have guests on it's usually someone that's like has a podcast or they work in the industry right. and then, like but there are a couple people that we've had on who are just like movie fans and they don't really work in the industry at all and they just like no i just want to talk about movies and i think you kind of fall in that uh, uh exactly a bit. <laughs> exactly that is where i'd place myself um oddly enough though i was listening to one of your uh, recent episodes and you featured Merc with the Movies on, and I'm sure this didn't come up, but so we actually, we met uh, online on Instagram a few years ago. I just used to run, when I was in university, I ran a small Instagram movie fast page for a right. couple of years, and he was a supporter of mine, and we met and chatted a few times over the years, and we still follow each other, each other to this day. So I was surprised and, and like positively surprised to see him feature on your channel. It was, I had no, I got, no idea you guys knew each other. <clears throat> but um, as far as my credentials, there's not much to say. Just a just a, a movie fan by all accounts, and I love what you do with your page and all your channels. And I'm a new, a recent listener of your podcast, and I, I wait for it every week. It's a great time. It's a good listen. Um, I am, however, just just within the last couple of weeks, just for shits, I just decided to start writing my first screenplay, or what will hopefully become my first screenplay. Nice. So I would love to break into the industry uh, if I ever can, hopefully in the future, and I'm sure I would do it by writing if ever. So that's all there is for me. But yeah, I appreciate you having me on, guys. No, no problem. Uh, that's that's the cool the cool thing about um, that's funny that you mentioned uh, Mark with the movies because like, yeah, he's followed G Rolls for a, a really long time, and we were like talk uh, through that. And then he actually, yeah, we had him on for like our Home Alone 2 anniversary episode. And I actually recorded, That's right. I recorded two episodes with him on Friday that are, will come out within like the next week or two. Um, we did an anniversary episode for a 25th hour and then one for Good Will Hunting as well. And we did them back okay. to back. It was very, very long uh, chat, <laughs> but, but he was like, he was so down and game to do it that it was just like, it was easy. And he was like, no, let's just like blow through these. I'm like, all right, cool, man. <laughs> Uh, so that was fun and that's all that's cool that you're um writing your own uh screenplay so i went to i went to la film school so i that's what i want to do i wanted to write movies i did a screenwriting and editing program there um i just happened to fall into doing press because i was like wanted to make money so uh, Uh, so yeah that's a cool gig no doubt um i would love to like as i mentioned to you i'm an east coast canadian there's as far as I know, not much, if any, opportunity to break into the film industry over here. Like, as far as Canada goes, it'd pretty much be Toronto would be my Toronto. guess anyway. But yep. that would be a dream for sure to live over there and be able to make some connections and network and do some stuff. But, you know, maybe in the future. Yeah, for sure. And, like, that's something you really shouldn't give up on either. Like, I, even though I have this job, well, I actually have too many jobs now. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I still, I still write and stuff like that. Actually, uh, I actually writing a show right now, which is kind of like based on our lives here in like Hermosa Beach, like South Bay. And uh, it's been fun to write. Um, you know, it's interesting when you base it on people, you know, <laughs> uh, they're all very curious to read it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, as long as you read it with an open mind, because like, you know, I don't make myself look perfect either. I, I write myself very honestly and like right. every, everyone's a little flawed, right? Um, and they're all like, no, no, I totally want to read it. I'm just worried about with writing now. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just worried about that one friend that reads it as like, this is what you think of me. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> as long as you give my heads up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, everyone, everyone, like, like my best, like my best friend, uh, 
He's the one that he actually helped start back to Blockbuster. And then uh, he couldn't be on the weekly show as much anymore, which is why we do like the spinoff now, like every other week. Um, he was one right. of the people I, to- I told and he was, I was like, he was like, yeah, I kind of want to read it. I was like, as long as you come at it with a very open mind, man, I will totally right. let you read it. Uh, it don't get too bad. To read it though. Yeah. yeah, for for sure. Uh, but it's like, I don't know, it's really yeah. cathartic to write mm-hmm. all that stuff and like kind of get all that stuff out in a creative way. And like, it kind of started as like a journal and I kind of like just turned it into right. like uh, an episodic thing. And it's been, it's been really fun. And uh Hope yeah, to do something. Good for you, man. Hope to do, yeah, hope to do something with it. We'll see. Um, yeah, I'm just glad that I never stopped. Like even with like doing this stuff, like I think in the beginning I kind of stopped because I was like, oh, I don't have time to really focus on it, and that was the hard part. Yeah, and that's what I found for myself with that page I mentioned um, on Instagram. There, I, I just found myself stop engaging as much, but I really enjoyed doing it, and it might be something that I continue to do in the future. Um, yeah, and it's hard to stand out though, you know. And I find that you do. Obviously, I found your page without even knowing you, and I've really liked your material. So, I mean, it, it, it's hard. It's a swamp uh, industry for sure, but it's it's nice when you can stand out. That's for sure. Very. What's actually helps out with getting having more time to do it is, I used to like when I was writing with uh, initially when I was writing with Joe Blow, I had to be up at like four in the morning, like my time to start working, right? Because like because they're like you know three hours ahead. Uh, and that was rough trying to do that. Like I was doing that Monday through Friday and then like my schedule changed with them and they were like, kind of like, you can just kind of float, float and make your own schedule. Just, you know, write a certain amount of stories a day. And like, it doesn't really what, matter what time you kind of wake up as long as you get them done by a certain point at the end of the day. So that helped out a lot. Up. Yeah. That that, was, that, uh, <clears throat> through your podcast. Sorry, I didn't mean to carry off there. Oh, we got good. a little time delay, I think. <clears throat> um, just uh, going through your episodes, I had heard you mention that you wrote, wrote for Joe Blow, and uh, I was just curious if you want to spend like 30 seconds or a minute or however long you'd like just elaborating on what you do for them or what, what you do with your press job even. Like, I was fascinated to hear that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I was hired as a news editor with them uh, initially, and basically just like, you know, I wake up at four in the morning, I would have to write. Mm-hmm four or five stories like so basically a story like an hour so you would just be on a shift you would have like your base of like what you have to write like you can come up with anything whatever was topical and entertainment right but okay. then you would also but then you would also have to be like if something broke in the middle of your shift you would have to like break away from like all this stuff you planned on writing and then like quickly like hop in and that's usually with like movie trailers or if something like the dc stuff happens like with like with wonder woman and that happens like out of nowhere they're like hey like stop what you're doing like now shift to this <laughs> so like that's uh that could be rough uh but like i it, i i learned how to be really quick i guess that's like the, mm. the good the thing you kind of like have to like and you also have to be really efficient you but then i'm like also like kind of a perfectionist when it comes to writing because i don't want to like <laughs> screw it screw i don't want to yeah. screw anything up so when you write too fast you're like dude i hope i didn't miss anything or like misspell something but usually it's been pretty good and then like through joe blow i was um i met someone uh that was like a fan of their uh website that had been writing for uh cbr like comic book resources so then they were like hey like okay. it's your freelance do you want to like you know see try to apply and like you know write for them and i did it i was like on a whim like all right whatever we'll see what happens and i got an email back within a day and they were like hey like if you can go if you can go through this like five day like writing boot camp so you can like learn how to write in our style like we would love to have you because they, they they saw some of the stuff on jobo they um so i guess someone showed them my g rolls page so they were like yeah we just want to make sure that you can like kind of keep up with our style and like what we were doing and i went through the five day thing and they're like yeah we would love to have you so i ended up writing for them as well so it's yeah and they're and they're a little they're a different kind of beast a little bit so there was like there are a ton of writers on CBR. Like there's a lot and like, we're all in like a message board together and they'll like kind of drop stories. They're like, like, Hey, these are like 10 stories. Whoever wants to grab whatever they want to grab, go ahead and grab it. And that's, Ouch. yeah, it's really cool. And like, you don't really, and then like, what's cool is that like someone will be like, Hey, like I picked up this like horror story, but like, I know that you're in the horror movies. I'm more into like the Marvel stuff. Can I actually grab that Marvel story that you had and I'll give you this horror story? And like, so I think it'd be better suited for you. And like, yeah, like everyone's super nice. <laughs> super nice, very collaborative. It's like amazing. 
that was um comic book resources what you said that was called yeah yeah comic book resources it doesn't, it doesn't sound as cool when you say comic book resources so everyone called it cbr it's a really big site that they used to just only focus on comic books uh and then they transitioned into covering like pop culture or, like film and tv because that's okay. you know, so they cover it like so it's a website there it, they still have like a dedicated like section on their site that's just comic books and all that stuff um but then they also have like they started to hire like uh writers for, like all the uh, movie stuff uh to okay. make that gr- to make that grow and it's actually become really big so i'm happy to go to check be- that out actually yeah happy to be a part of it and they're like a really good uh really good crew the editors are like super like uh super helpful like they'll, they'll message you like if there's like a little something that you need to tweak or change like hey just for next time like can you focus on this okay. maybe do this differently like but never in a way where it's like condescending it's always very like right everyone everyone's super helpful. right nice. and like and i will say like with joe blow i mean i think if there was like so few of us there's not a lot um i think it becomes a little stressful because you have like seven writers trying to cover an entire day worth of like entertainment news yeah and and they i mean get it done but it's like it's it's stressful sometimes like there there would be times where like yeah, there would be times when my shift would be over, and I'd be looking at the clock, like I have five minutes left. Like, please don't let anything break in five minutes, so, so I could just be done for the well, day. Yeah. <laughs> like, Try in for no news. Yeah, there'll, there'll be times where it's like, oh, you know, I have like two minutes, and then something drops, and I'm like, I wonder if I can like stall like long enough, so like the other guy picks this up, and I don't have to do it. Yeah, can't say I blame you for that one. Yeah, but. I have definitely stalled a few times. <laughs> like. Oh, like what? My computer, my internet was down. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is actually. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, they're both really cool to write for, and uh, and like what I really love about CBR is that they really encouraged me to keep up the the G roll stuff because they're like, hey, that's your baby. Like we can like cross promote things if you want to. So that's like really cool as well. So yeah, I'm like I'm having a good time. Like I said, I do want to like. Do what you're doing and start writing a little bit more of my own stuff but like um it's been fun it's been an interesting thing and then like starting like uh, we started our podcast a year ago in november uh and this is yeah this has been like a fun thing too guys I've, I've gotten to meet so many interesting people and i like you know initially we had like you know there were three hosts and that kind of changed and then like my buddy was like hey like you're the face of it so like you know why don't you just kind of like you're the main person and then you can, you know, enough people, you can rotate people in and out and totally great I, approach. Yeah. And that's been really fun too. And there are people uh, that are on often cause they're just fans of the, of the show. And they're like, Hey, I would love to hop on and talk about certain things. And I'm more than willing to have people on as much as they want to be on. Cause it's like, it's well, a lot of fun. Thank you. It's great to be yep. here. I've never been on a podcast before. I've flirted with the idea of running one myself before and you never know very well may in the future. Not savvy with that kind of thing, but it, it really interests me. So again, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, um, you know what, what's very helpful for us, oh. and I, I will say this: uh, Playlist Studios are the people that reached out to me about doing a podcast. And I have to say, and I respect people who edit and do all their stuff on their own. We we have we right. have we have the added benefit of like having them help. And um, I mean, they give us a lot of they give us like the final like you know approval on like whatever edits or cuts they make and like you kind of direct them on like what you want from like a certain episode but they do a lot of the heavy lifting i had to do all the promoting and stuff but they do all the work that me mm. we really time consuming for me to do like uh just you know, with life and work <laughs> and stuff so they, yep. they 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 really help with like taking a lot of that weight off my shoulders so i have to like, fully give them a lot of credit for that it probably is you sent me yeah. kind of an editing software. I wouldn't know what to do. So that's nice. That he has some help with that. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I, I can edit, but I'm also, I, like I said, when it comes to certain things, I'm like a perfectionist. So like I, I would sit yeah. there probably, it would probably be a year before we had like another episode <laughs> if I, if I edited it myself. <laughs> My Scorsese editing your own video. <laughs> no, no, it is horrible. Yeah. Um, well, let's um jump into some news. I don't even know what to like start with because there's like so many things going there's on. So much. <laughs> um, you know what? Since you, er- with, I'm down for. Uh, you know what? Since everyone's been talking about it, I will I will start with like the DC stuff. Uh, and a lot has happened in like a week. <laughs> um, so so initially, 
Yeah, so initially it started with the news that they were scrapping like Wonder Woman 3, even though Warner Brothers like uh did officially announce it and they said that Patty Jenkins was working on the script. But that but I, of course that was under the old regime there and new people have taken over. Uh James Gunn and Peter Safran are officially in charge of DC Studios. Um apparently they met with Patty Jenkins. She sent in like a treatment for what the third film was gonna be. Um I don't think it really lined up with their plans, their future plans. Clearly not. <laughs> and and they dropped it. And now there are a lot of people. Uh, I I want to point like someone for Deadline. I know it was a, it was a woman that wrote the story, and they did edit the story afterwards. But she basically said that she didn't like the optics of like two men coming in. This you know this you know only like female superhero on deck at DC at the moment and directed by a woman, they felt like it, the optics weren't good that these two guys came in and what they felt looked like pushed her out. Um, uh, yeah, according to uh, James Gunn, that's not what happened. They actually, I guess, like gave her notes on her treatment and gave, and said like, hey, like, can you tackle it a different way? Um, and apparently she didn't want to do that. They said that there were some issues that were like, the, the 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 issue the issues with the third one they were saying it was a it had similar like structural issues that Wonder Woman 1984 had and I don't know if if, if you've seen that back. yeah that you know I've stayed away I mean I actually just <laughs> in anticipation of this conversation watched the trailer again just for shits and giggles and yeah. was reminded why I didn't stay away and uh, that's why I'm not <laughs> surprised that Wonder Woman three is not going forward, especially considering that she, she didn't write the first one, just directed, is that right? And then she wrote the second one. And then she wrote the second one. Did. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm assuming three, any logical person could have assumed it was probably going the same way. So I don't necessarily right. blame them for scrapping it, but it is yeah, what I it is. I do for Patty, but. Yeah, I don't, either. so here, I actually put, I think I put it on one of my stories. And I was like, I don't know how to like feel about this. Cause I, I really liked the first movie. I thought the first movie was really good. And then I was like, that second one was a dumpster fire. And then, um, but I was like, look at, but I was looking forward to like a little third film redemption, possibly if like they could have made it better. Um, but I, you know, if it, if it did have the same like narrative, like structural issues that the second movie had, then I could, good thing. I, don't, I don't, I don't blame them. Like, you know, being like, Hey, this is not where we're going to, we can't really move forward like this. And they have, you know, they have their, own plans and they 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 inherited a lot of problems i i would say yes they um, did and i think um what's hard is fans don't really understand what position they're in um You're like right. we can we can all say like what we think works already like hey like that first wonder woman movie was good like maybe give her that second one wasn't great but maybe give her another chance to like kind of right better direct <laughs> Let her direct. Yeah. Let her just let her direct it. Um, or and then there, right, and then there's the issue of like, okay, since there's no Wonder Woman three, where does that leave like Gal Gadot? Is she, like she's still their Wonder Woman? Are they going in a different direction? Right. Um, I think we learned a few days later that uh, they were going in a different direction when they announced that James Gunn was going to write a new Superman movie, but it was going to focus on his younger days as a superhero, and that means that Henry Cavill is out after making the announcement that he was back and then <laughs> and then after filming and I mean, putting putting a cameo at the end of black adam to show that he was back um that one had a lot of people upset <laughs> um, uh, when that news dropped i remember asking myself or thinking rather i don't know who i'd want to be less in this situation james gunn or henry cavill like they both like James, I get what he's doing, and I appreciate a new vision going forward for DC, but that's got to be a hard call and hard conversation to have. So I'm not jealous of him at all. And of course, Henry goes about saying, just dropped out of The Witcher for, I mean, I don't know if, if it's yeah. speculation or if it was to focus on Superman just to have it drop. Like I wouldn't want to be in that guy's shoes either. But uh, you know, he'll he'll stay busy. He'll pick good projects. He's a great actor. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, he can stay on involved in DC going forward in a different capacity maybe but yeah tough, yeah tough time for both of them apparently uh they did james gunn said they did have talks with him about 
possibly playing another role in like future DC stuff. So like the conversation, I guess, is open. I think I think what would be hard though if they do that. I think fans will be like, I don't want to see him as anything else but our Man of Steel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <Do that. laughs> um, I felt bad for him though because you could tell that he really loves the part and loves the character and like wanted to do it again. I always kind of felt like you know I. I think Man of Steel gets better with every time I watch it. I mean, I remember feeling like kind of lukewarm about it when I first saw it, and I didn't. And then with each viewing, it gets a little better. You know, I do understand like the other two movies he did, uh, Batman versus Superman, and then the theatrical Justice League uh, are, are not <laughs> are not great movies. But I always thought that he just never got a, his fair shot, really, to really, because he was like really good in the part. He just had the projects that he was a part of in that universe just weren't up to par, which is like unfortunate because like I feel like he like he has the chops. I feel like he's really right for the part. Um, I agree with you, man. Though yeah. I agree that had to be like a hard discussion for them to have with him, and then for him to have to yeah. like then then make that statement. Like I, you know, I did love that he kind of called out Warner Brothers, like yeah, I because he was like, yeah, they were the ones that told me to release that, like statement on instagram like saying that he was back and uh but then the rest of his statement was very like you know cordial and very like polite and respectful um superman still lives on like yeah that was great to read like it, you can tell that he really does love the character what the character stands for he took it very gracefully we'll put it that way yeah um <clears throat> i guess like uh what kind of happens now is i so apparently the hollywood reporter said that he did shoot a cameo for the flash but apparently that's getting cut uh, they said that Gal Gadot also filmed a cameo for The Flash, and that's most likely getting cut, which makes me really nervous that if they're, it feels like they're not going to keep her, <laughs> if like they're, yeah, if they're, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that ma- <clears throat> that makes everyone wonder, like, what's the point of these upcoming DC movies? Are they going to like not be a part of your plan anymore? So you have like you have The Flash coming out, you have the Aquaman sequel coming out. There's also a uh, like Blue Beetle and all that, all like and shazam like fury of the gods so like it's like people are like are those movies gonna matter are you going to like wipe the slate clean after they come out because the reason that they have to come out is because it's too much of a financial liability to let them go they they all cost a lot of money to make exactly Uh, i mean that's why they that's why i'm not jealous of james guns (laughs) yeah that means that there's a reason why they they didn't scrap the flash when ezra miller was going through all that stuff because it's like too much money involved in it they can't just scrap a two hundred million dollar movie, so it, it. I think someone on Twitter was like, "Warner Brothers, how are they going to be like gay? Like these movies matter. Like when they have to when they come out, like and they're doing like press for it and stuff. Like, like no man. Like as soon as this movie comes out, we might be like redoing all this. Um, I wonder if they do work some reshoots in any of those movies and try and and formulate some sort of uh, climactic ending to the DCEU through one means or another, maybe because. I mean, it's not too late. What what are the release dates for for most of these movies? Like Shazam well, two, I can't even remember when that was. I think I think out. Shazam two is in March, so it's, I think it's first. Uh, the Flash is in June, and then I know Aquaman got pushed all the way back to like late next year. So like, and then uh, I mean, I guess you can like keep Blue Beetle because I don't know if it. I don't know how uh, great. Uh, project so yeah yeah I mean, maybe it's maybe it's small enough where it's like yeah you can like see through the cracks <laughs> that, is, that is fine <laughs> yeah um i i don't know man like i do kind of get that vibe though like yeah what's the point of like watching these now if like they're not going to be part of like your greater plan right and like and it does suck because you have all these like stars that i mean i know they talked about like there was rumors that if jason momoa doesn't want if they if they don't go with him as aquaman anymore they have other ideas for him and like you know with Ben Affleck they they talked to Ben Affleck about directing a DC project uh, Batman movie hopefully would be great that'd be great I mean like you know and I know that um be- before Matt Reeves got involved with the Batman I know that Ben Affleck was going to tackle a Batman movie at one point yep uh and you know that didn't come together but yeah I mean I do like that they're having like all these kind of side like kind of creative discussions with different people and the reason why they said that their plan won't be fully like out there until like january so they're still talking to talent and directors and all this other stuff to kind of flesh out this like 10-year uh plan that they have Mm. i I think it's so crazy that just now i mean 
Marvel's had this down to a science almost like just kind of taking their time and mapping things out. And, you know, you can say what you want to say, but I know people have been critical about this last phase that Marvel's had, but still, even if, even if they're most like, like weakest, they still have it more together than like DC does. <laughs> They've nailed the formula very much. So even if they have faltered a bit, that's debatable, but uh, they definitely outshine DC when it comes to universe creating that much can be said. Anybody can agree with that for sure. And I'm sure going forward, James, having been a Marvel collaborator for years now, is a good person to have in that driver's seat because he very much knows what works yeah. with them and yeah. he's a talented director. So they got a good person, you know, championing the team, I think, for sure. I think so, too. And, like, I, he released a statement today uh, that kind of, you know, in, oh, part, okay. he, yeah, in part, he was like, one of the things Peter and I were aware of when we took the job as heads of DC Studios was a certain minority of people online that could be well uproarious and unkind to say the least our choices for the dcu are based upon what we believe is best for the story and best for the dc characters who have been around for nearly 85 years perhaps these choices are great perhaps not but they are made with sincere hearts and integrity and always with the story in mind no one loves to be harassed or called names but to be frank we've been through significantly worse Disrespectful outcry will never, ever affect our actions. We were aware that there would be a period of turbulence when we took this gig, and we knew we would sometimes have to make difficult and not so obvious choices, especially in the wake of the fractious nature that came before us. But this means little to us in comparison to our jobs as artists and custodians in helping to create a wide and wonderful future for DC. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, you know, he, I'm sure they knew, like, especially with the Henry Cavill stuff that they were going to get like they're they're they going to get a barrage of very ang- angry Twitter comments. <laughs> um, a, a great fan base, really dedicated people love him in that role. So I'm sure they were sweating releasing that news. Yeah. Yeah. But I support the direction. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Too. Like, if, if you, Sorry, what? Go ahead. Oh, no, no, I do too. I mean, I also, I, I agree with, I think a clean slate probably is the best choice for them like it's like you know it, it was too much of a mess before <laughs> it's it's like when you have like uh you know a new president comes in like or like a president of the united states that's inheriting like a really awful problem from like the last four years like, like the what? last one yeah yeah exactly great comparison exactly <laughs> exactly so it's like what do you want me to do i i inherited a shit ton of problems that I have to fix. And I, I mean, I do know they probably, they knew that going in, like when they took this position that like, it it, it had to like suck though. Like, like, so I don't know what's going on with like black Adam either. And like, I, I know Dwayne, I know Dwayne Johnson, like he, he, when he was promoted, like I went to like a black Adam event when they first dropped the, the first trailer and he was there for it. And he was like, Oh, very wow. ki- very kind to all of us. He only invited like a certain mi- like number of people from the press to like see it and then like see the trailer and then have it talk about the movie. And he was very passionate about the movie. Like he was really like ten years in the making for him. Like he'd been really wanting to do it. Um, yeah. I, I think what happened though is <laughs> I think some people, even with someone as cool as The Rock, some people want to knock people down a few pegs. And him saying things like this is going to change the hierarchy of the DC universe. And like, you know, he, right. he made he made a big deal about, you know, doing whatever he could to get Henry Cavill back. Right. I have to wonder, though, if like if you're James Gunn, you take over this position. Right. And you're like you're seeing Black Adam, you're seeing all this press and you're like, well, I don't know if we're going to like stick with you either. <laughs> I'm going to ask you that. You've seen it. I haven't seen Black Adam. What would you? What, if you're James Gunn, what do you do? Do you, do you leave The Rock on and use him in future projects, or do you just start a clean slate, including him? So I thought Black Adam was fine. It was entertaining. Um, but I, this, is, it's a, this is going to sound like, like faint praise. Uh, it's, it was better than most of the stuff they have come out with. At least I was like entertained. I could uh, totally understand when I was watching it why critics didn't love it, because there's not like For a... Sure. There's not a lot of story. But, I mean, there, but it's it was entertaining from start to finish. There's a lot of action. Like it was fun. I liked I liked some of the like the side characters uh were really good too. Um I think though so. <clears throat> yeah I I think I think that's a tough one. I think you do want someone like Dwayne Johnson in your corner. But I also think he probably 
doesn't like to have his ego bruised, and I think his ego is a bit bruised seeing how they've oh, handled really? how they handled all this. Like he was the one that was Strangers like, "I'm Twitter defending its box office performance," so he's definitely yeah. a little hurt. Yeah. So like, like he was the one that was like, "I did everything I could in my power to get Henry Cavill back." Like he was that guy. So he was like, you know, I did this for the fans. This is what the fans wanted, and they just undid that. And then there's the issue of like is black adam financially successful you know depending on who you ask um if you're a variety yeah if you're variety who did that story on it it's gonna lose like 50 million dollars or more if you're deadline you get a direct quote from the rock who says like well i talked to my financiers and they said we're gonna make this much money from the movie and then you have other stories that are like, no, that's still not accurate. Like we, we know basic math and numbers, and this is how much the movie costs to make. <laughs> what is the most recent consensus? Because I am probably a week out of any Black Adam financial news. So Deadline still was saying that like in the end, like once you count like like its box office and then like on demand digital release, Blu-ray it'll probably get in the black, <laughs> but like, that's not enough for them. I'm sure Warner brothers was like, Hey, we could have made this much money off of this. There's definitely money that was like left on the table with that. Like, you know, you don't have like a big super home mo- super, superhero movie starring Dwayne Johnson and have it barely make $400 million globally. That's not like, that's not what you're like. You you've had, you've had a bigger, you wanted a bigger outcome from that. Without a doubt, and I think I'm, the yeah I you know I so I was surprised like I remember opening weekend I was like all right I thought I was gonna make like eighty million dollars over the weekend I mean that was like a fair number I thought because yeah everyone doesn't really know who the character is it's not like a Superman or a Batman but you know right. it's the but it's the Rock so I was like you know always been on the Rock he, he <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so then like when we were getting like box office tracking and they were like oh it's tracking at like 65 70 i was like really that seems really like low and then they ended up making like 67 million dollars opening weekend and what they did what they did in the press they were like oh well this is like his biggest opening as like a solo star as like the lead actor that's his biggest opening of course it's not his biggest opening ever because he's been a part he's been a part of like the fast and the furious franchise like and all that stuff so like right so and then and then sure. yeah yeah, and what they did for the next what they did for the next three weeks, even though the numbers weren't great, all they did in the next three weeks were like, "Whoa, it's the number one movie in the world." Three weeks running, I was like, "Yeah, because nothing else is out." <laughs> so like, that's what, <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, so like, so that's why, and like, we're not gonna talk about that like sixty some percent tumble in weekend two. Like, we're not gonna that, that's not good. Like, no, it's still number one movie in the world. <laughs> and they kept like flipping that so narrative. Paint that picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did they, it open all right. in China? No, okay, so that's a big thing, right? So Russia and China did not open in. China is a huge market for especially for uh The Rock. He's really popular there. Um it could have easily added maybe at least one twenty five, maybe they were saying, like like to its like international gross. For sure. Um, you know, but uh, Wakanda Forever had that same problem too. They didn't get a, it didn't get a release in China as well. Uh but yeah, they're really strict over there about or no. what, or just the material? It's the Why material. It... So like, oh, okay. so so with Wakanda Forever, it was because there was like a brief moment in it between two women. So they were they were like, no, we can't show it here. I think Black Adam oh, didn't have Disney that. Wouldn't edit it. Right. Yeah, right, they wouldn't edit it. They wouldn't I think it Black, out. Black Adam had some other like cultural like things that they were like not like no. Uh, okay. So like, so that's a I mean that's a huge market and like, I and you and you know I agree with a lot of people. We probably wouldn't be even having this conversation if it opened in, in China because it. Would, it would have done significantly better. Uh, Russia too. I mean, like it would have added a little bit more money there as well. So there is that. I'm not saying that like it's like there were things working against it, but I also think that like totally. And I also think too like so here was like the narrative at first, like when they were promoting it. And remember, it was the whole like it's going to change the hierarchy of the DC universe. Is how big this movie is going to be, right? But then it opens, and it doesn't open as huge as they thought it would. So the next few weeks all he would he kind of changed that and was like you know what this is our first movie we're like the little engine that could like we're just starting and i was like that's not what you were saying like three weeks ago though like and then he compared like uh the worldwide gross to like uh captain america the first avenger he's like well that movie made 370 million worldwide and i was like well of course that was like several years ago 
and <laughs> and um also had better reviews uh than black adam totally. uh totally i was like but if you want to spin it this way then i it's it's such obvious spin though i think that's what makes it like it is it hard me out a little bit <laughs> yeah it, it's like it, you know, it's cringy it's just like dude you were like boasting about like how it was the best thing since like cinema and now you're saying like no no we're like the little engine that could like we're just starting we're just building our universe um I did. He, I did hear that uh, he unfollowed uh, Warner Brothers Discovery on Instagram, and he unfollowed the Black Adam movie page. So that can't be good. <laughs> um, There's an his, interesting development. About I, his future, I have a feeling you're onto something there. Yeah, I. Yeah. Um, I also. I think his. I think his. I don't. They could probably have discussions with him about staying on in some capacity, but if it's not to like build his Black Adam universe, I don't think he would want to stay. So. That. I don't disagree with you. No, yeah. I, I believe that he would want to be the face of that. Yeah. And uh, you hear, I mean, I don't obviously know him at all at any regard, but you get, he has that persona of not being much of a team player, being very much like wants to be front and center. And I, I guess I believe that. So yeah, I can agree. I can agree with that for sure. Yeah. It has to be hard. Like he's one of the biggest movie stars in the world. And with that comes a lot of clout. And I've actually said before on here, if I said before on here, I was like, you know, if I was a studio, I, w- I would want Dwayne Johnson promoting my movie because he's really good at getting the word out. Um, I I did say when this movie opened, though, I was like, this is going to be a major test of like how much kind of power he kind of has um, and how much leverage he kind of has. And right. And, and I think now I think he has his limit has been this i think i think i think it's hard to like deal with like releasing a movie in the, in the middle of like a studio like changing hands like that like when it was greenlit it was greenlit under a certain like different people when he was trying to get like henry cavill back for a cameo that that regime had already changed too so it was like all right now it's like people at warner brothers have changed so now we got to convince them to bring him back and then now you're dealing with this whole like warner brothers discovery merger now there's like different people attached to it and now you have two new guys who are going to be in charge of just dc studios which is like all the comic book movies tv shows like whatever so now like it's changed hands so much so it's like how i mean what it was greenland under what what they promised you probably when they were like we're going to develop this project and your your production company is going to like produce it it's, it's going to be all you know this is your your playpen basically and i think now it's not really his playpen, so that, that. <laughs> doesn't seem so. Unfortunately, yeah, that, just, I guess it chalks down to bad timing. Yeah, it really does, and and of course, I don't want to see like I mean, he was so passionate when he talked about it. Like, I think that I hate to see it, like him kind of like I would take anyone to lose sure. a passion a passion project, but whatever it is, right? And yeah, and you know. But I think there's a reason he hasn't said anything like publicly about what's going on. Uh, perhaps they had have conversations with him, and he probably can't talk. Maybe he can't talk about it yet. Or, yeah, sure, know. that's the case. Yeah, but like you know, this is a guy that like whenever something's successful, he's like right there on his Instagram and Twitter, letting us know how successful it is. And I will say too, like, I even though I don't agree with like all of his answers, I do like when people called out the box office numbers that he did at least respond and didn't try to hide away from it. Like he was like, you know, like he could have easily just ignored it and like not said anything. I kind of wish he was just more like transparent. Uh, <laughs> and like maybe be like, yo, like we're doing all right, but we left some money on the table. Like, obviously <laughs> like, <clears throat> but you know, that's the most graceful way to take it. But I mean, he is the rock. Yeah. He is the rock. And I think that's why, you know, since this all happened, he shifted to just posting pictures of like his new movie with like Chris Evans that he's filming, like this like Christmas movie uh, for Amazon. So like all his Instagram stuff has been that, and of course working out. Uh, uh, he's put a lot of that on there. Uh, Iron Paradise. <laughs> yeah, very, very, very less about Black Adam and more about like what's next for him. So like, you know, I, I think personally, I don't know this for sure, but I think he might be moving on from it. Probably because maybe they didn't give him a choice but to move on from it. You know, there were all these promises, like, initially, like, when they were doing press for the movie, like, a week, they were already talking about, like, you know, a sequel, like, they already had plans for it, and that it would probably come sooner rather than later, and then he had talked about doing this whole, like, Black Adam versus Superman thing down the line, like, that he had, like, there's a lot of ideas, 
and I just imagine quick too much hype, way too quick. And I just imagine if you're James Gunn and you're Peter Saverin, and then like you get that job and you like read all the stuff he's been saying, you're like, fuck, he doesn't know we're gonna, we can't do that. <laughs> like, yeah. What yeah, exactly? What? That's why. <laughs> not the health like, decisions they've had to make. Like what? Like no, 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 no. <laughs> maybe they'll give him a shot down the line if he wants maybe a supporting role in a future Justice League or Justice League esque kind of movie. Maybe a few years go by, he'll get reminiscent and want another chance to take up the mantle. Who knows? Who knows what we yeah. see down the line? I I support him. All right, I'm gonna ask you if you're Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa. I guess we already kind of talked a little bit about uh, the Rock. Uh, I guess uh, Zachary Levi would fall on this too for Shazam. Um, if they're like, hey, this is like it for your version of these characters in these movies, but we want to use you in a different capacity for future plans down the line, do you stay? Or do you like, oh, I built, I took all this time kind of building this one character. I know it's been a mess <laughs> like at the studio, but like, you know, I put my heart and soul into like this character and like, I wouldn't want to play anything else but this part. Levi, correct me if I'm wrong. Did, was uh, Shazam not his first, if not one of his first roles? It's like, well, it was his first big movie. Um, oh, he had, right. yeah, he, had, yeah, he had done TV uh, and stuff, but yeah, but it was his first like big, big movie. Yeah. I remember at the time, I remember him getting jacked during filming and following that yeah. process a bit. So if I'm, if I'm Zachary Levi, I might step away and go see some other. Some other stuff, yeah. just because he's got a promising career. He's made a name for himself playing Shazam and one and probably two well-received mo- movies. So I think there's a lot uh, that's left to be discovered for his career. So I'd probably step away if I were him. Wouldn't judge him if he did want to stay, if they invited him on, because, it's, you know, guaranteed work, guaranteed money. Um, Jason Momoa, interesting, because do you happen to remember off the top of your head? I, I do remember seeing the actual name of a character that they were in oh, the like, of letting him come. Lo- I think it's like Lobo or something like has he uh he's talked about wanting to probably do it and he kind of looks the part. Um I, I don't think I actually don't think that he's but... yeah I don't think he's I, I honestly don't think he'd be totally against that if they actually pitched him on something because I think he has a I think he has a personal relationship with James Gunn. So does Zachary Levi. He actually had brought that up too. They have like and that has to be difficult too, right? So they have like personal <laughs> relationships with him where they're like I'm at least on friendly terms, like you know, uh, has to be has to be a tough discussion to have. It's like, okay, well, this isn't gonna work anymore, but maybe we can like pitch you on this. Um, well, it's not, yeah, it's not by any means unreasonable or uh, out of the realm of expectations for directors to use their friends and frequent collaborate in the future projects. I know this is yeah. a little bit different circumstance where they're trying to do a fresh slate, but I mean, I wouldn't object to seeing any of those faces in different roles, hopefully more minor roles, if so, but. Um, yeah. If I'm Jason Momoa, he just brings a great, a great atmosphere and electricity to any of his roles, and no doubt to yeah. the DCEU, he's one of the more positive parts of it. So right. I would totally support seeing him in that role. But uh, I mean, I do because I don't, I don't. Other than Dune, there's not much in at least recent years that he sticks out to me as yeah. taking on any other project. So I would like to go see Jason Momoa and some other stuff. I know he did that show, that Apple TV show C. Oh, C, yeah, C, but. Um, <laughs> There you go. Support him. <laughs> yeah, that was not planned at all. But uh, I think he'd be great going forward in in the DCU. Like I, I think I'd support seeing him. Like I just, I love him, and he's great as Aquaman and brings a good yeah. electricity. Gal Gadot, I don't know. I, I don't have my mind made up. I thought she was a good Wonder Woman, but then again, like Wonder Woman, yeah, it's it's a big one of DC's big properties. I don't. They, they'll have people lining up for that role. I don't think they'll really right. find themselves in any difficult spot trying to cast another one if they do, but Gal is so great. But again, another really talented actress. I think I would just rather go see her in other properties, but. Yeah. So she's an, she's an interesting one of these three because I think she loves the part, clearly really loves the part. Um, But a lot of it was so intertwined with her connection to Patty Jenkins. They kind of like developed, like once she got, once she, I mean, I know like Zack Snyder was the one that was like, that cast her because he cast her in Batman versus Superman. And actually, he cast mm. he cast the majority of like the Snyderverse as we know it. So it's like, um, but like, but like her relationship with that character kind of evolved more once Patty Jenkins got involved with that first movie, and they were like pretty entwined, like kind of like developing the character together. 
Is that where they started their professional relationship with yeah, this Wonder Woman? Or... Woman, okay. yeah. And like, and of course, I think I think Patty Jenkins at the time, like when they when Zack Snyder cast her in Batman vs Superman, and this is how long these things are in development. Like Patty Jenkins was on board for Wonder Woman, so he he had to have that discussion with her about like, well, this is the girl, you know, hopefully the right girl because you need to agree as well, and like, and, yeah. But it worked out though, because her and Patty Jenkins have like a really good like collaborative friendship and professional relationship. I, it makes me wonder if she would like want to do it without her, because uh, you know. It's a great, uh, great point. Patty, yeah, Patty Jenkins made a, a comp, like a statement, like a brief one after all this happened, and she basically said that because I think the story is insinuated that she like walked away, and she basically said like no, like I she didn't walk away. It's just like there's a lot of changes going on at DC, you know. I'm sure that she tried to pitch them on her idea and they were like, it's just not what we want to do moving forward. Um, God, I mean, how many awkward fucking conversations did they have like within a week <laughs> with all these so people? So many. <laughs> all all these people. week for sure. A lot of people had them. And if I was like, and the thing is like, these are decisions being made together by James Gunn and Peter Safran, but James Gunn is the bigger name. So James Gunn is the one yeah. that's like, all of the barrage is like coming on him yeah. because, because people don't even know who the peter guy is they're like yeah he's the money guy he's in, he's important <laughs> um but <laughs> i think but i but i think that james gunn is the face of this not only because like he's a bigger name but he is the one that is he's gonna be making all the creative decisions for the universe moving forward so he is that face of it at least you know like and yeah yeah it's it's a hard spot to be in i don't i don't envy him uh no you know, not at all now of course we've seen this happen before right with like fans will like boohoo and cry and bitch about a lot and then you give them like one good thing and they're like oh yeah man i'm so cool i knew he could do it like that's not what you said like a year ago <laughs> but, but yeah in cast and was, and batman there was backlash yeah, severe backlash yeah. that and then they see the movie and they're like oh, okay this is a good call yeah so. i mean this goes back a long ways right i mean this i mean fans have been like this forever like uh of course, and it will be like that forever. yeah in the 80s when they cast michael keaton as batman they're like uh, no <laughs> and then that <laughs> right yeah. if, and if and for a lot of people now he's still some people's favorite batman so i think it's funny how that changes right you know heath ledger gets cast as the joker in the dark knight everyone's like the guy from two things i hate about you no and then they see it <laughs> and then they see it and they're like oh well I mean, he was great. He was Oscar. I mean, like that's, it's you know, fans are a very, very fickle bunch. Like, they get mad that for they like, are. they get mad for a hot minute, and then like you give them like one little piece of something good, you know. Like I used to feel bad for, I used to feel bad for Ryan Johnson after the Last Jedi because like he got a lot of like, like they were just throwing harpoons at the poor guy, <laughs> and yeah. then. The, and then like kind of forgetting like kind of forgetting like yo he made looper looper's great like do we not forget about like the stuff that he's done and then like he had to like kind of take a step back he does knives out and they're like well that was good still don't forgive you for star wars <laughs> on track. but i was i was one of those ones that was mad at him after uh the last jedi, <laughs> after last jedi. But his filmography <laughs> other than that is honestly pretty bulletproof his debut brick i'm not sure yeah. if you've seen is fantastic he directed some of the better episodes of uh breaking bad and his work after post Last Jedi is fantastic too. So, but yeah, I, I agree. I was definitely not on his side after that. Ugh, yeah. But yeah, I yeah, think I, I think I, get, yeah. I think yeah, I think he redeemed himself for a lot of people with Knives Out, and then dude made a second Knives Out that was, I think, a little better than the first one. So like, it was like, good, good for him. Um, and but I think it's funny too. I don't think he is really deterred by like what fans say because like when he was at the premiere for like Knives Out too. He still wants to make another Star Wars project. I don't think he cares. He's just like, yo, I would, I would, I would do one. Yeah. Do one in a, he's like, I would do one in a heartbeat. So like, I think at the end of the day, it's just like it's all kind of lip service. Like, yeah, everyone's gonna like bitch and moan about. I mean, Star Wars fans are like the worst of the bunch. Uh, <laughs> Notorious for being harsh. Yeah. Oh, and so like, you can't make everyone happy. I think that's what this D- DC thing is kind of showing people is that like can't make everyone mm-hmm. happy and like and they they knew i mean with certain like the henry cavill stuff they knew they were i mean i i bet warner brothers is probably missing that those days like a couple months ago when they just scrapped batgirl and like everyone was mad about that <laughs> and, yeah that's right that was a concern now. Yeah, now they're like fuck Ugh. now everyone's still mad at us they're still mad at james gunn 
but then there are like you know there are also a lot of vocal people in support of him that they were like yo he's a very talented filmmaker he has like a lot of you know a lot of great ideas and like let's see what he does before we you know he's the fan of the property like i honestly i have trust in him i wasn't like the biggest fan of his the suicide squad i thought it was an improvement in a lot of ways but there was a thing you know it wasn't perfect there were things i didn't like about it too but that being said i think if he takes a more dc approach and leaves a little bit more of his of his marvel tendencies behind i think that he will be great and not, that's not even to say he'll be directing everything but what he does choose right. to really champion and direct i have faith in him yeah i agree with you on that one i uh think that people should kind of like take a step back and just wait and see what happens wait exactly. i mean not to say i mean like i think you even messaged me when the henry cavill stuff like happened the first person I <laughs> <laughs> and i like i like because i was like i was uh i managed part-time at a restaurant too and i was like I didn't have my phone out and I saw that you messaged me and I like went in my email and I was like, oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> I was like, I you found out was that work. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, Jesus. I was like, that's not good. And I just went on Twitter and had a lot of fun just reading everyone. You know, some of the disdain is, some of the disdain is like kind of funny because it's like, come on, guys. This is like, you have like no, like, no dog in this fight at all. Like, you're not, like, you're not, this is not your money that's being invested in these projects. Like, why are you like, so upset um but i but i did like see like there was some just sincere like feeling bad for him uh that you know because he clearly was very excited to be back and he really loves the part and i did feel bad for him in that regard but like you said you know and i also feel bad because like i don't know for sure if he quit the witcher for this uh to do superman stuff sure i would think that has something to do with it but i don't uh, a buddy of mine was who's really big into the witcher was theorizing or said something along the lines that he wasn't a big fan of where the writing was headed so i think that may have played into it too i don't know but yeah i'm sure superman had a, an impact on him leaving no doubt yeah just for to turn well, around and go up in flames but I feel well i guess too. um can't really cry him a river too much he did end up getting another he's doing an amazon show um uh, yeah that, oh, was that that he's doing that warhammer yeah so he uh i guess he has been uh trying to get this off the ground for a while and and he plans on like they at least according to his instagram and he plans on making it like its own little cinematic universe so you know one door closes another one opens um yeah, you know we'll be busy with that you know and you know still good looking so you know <laughs> the world is <laughs> oyster he, the world is, <laughs> he's fine. exactly he has what, no problem that's what one of my friends was like my friend was like he'll be fine guys <laughs> like, i know this is like you guys are so sad <laughs> but like well, he'll be rolling around in all his millions of dollars and getting a bunch of new roles. Like, I would love, you know what, though? And this is going to sound really petty. I would love if, like, Marvel just snatched him up for something. <laughs> that would be quite something. I would I if love, like, I, I, you know, the right story, right amount of money. I can't see him turning it down. Okay, don't put it that way. Uh, and then, like, give all those interviews where he just talks about how Marvel, like, respects its talent and blah. Just, like, kind of shade one brother. <laughs> happening you know, uh, <laughs> wouldn't surprise me I, uh, i'd like to see him just you know pursue an endeavor that he's really passionate about like clearly he is with this warhammer thing like he's a big yeah. gamer i know that i don't know much about that property but uh, you know what he, he's had his time with those superheroes and obviously whatever you want to do good for him but i would yeah. i think it'd be refreshing to see him do something else i think so too and i know i know there's like i know he's one of those names that they floated around or fans have floated around to like play james bond next I know he's like on a fan's short. I don't think I don't know if he's on like a producer's short list, but I know he's on a fan's short list for that part. Yeah, um, for sure. I think the man from Uncle was more or less his shot at yeah, being that a, was a, a front runner for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ex yeah. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, he'll be fine. Uh, he'll get another. Mm -hmm. I mean, he already has a stuff. He'll have more stuff lined up. Um, you know, you know, I think it was just the initial like getting the statement out and then like kind of dealing with all that. That part probably was hard and that probably was a very difficult discussion for all of them to have. Um, I, I like the, I think what everyone should know is that I don't think these were like these are not easy decisions for them because they know what they're going to get uh, by making some of these choices, especially a big one like that. Um, you know, you just have to trust that they're trying to fix they, 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 they inherited a sinking ship. So we got to let them try to like. <laughs> Try to make it better. <laughs> what his career looks like going forward, if anything, he will be immortalized as Superman in this era and just 
by nature of being involved in, in this transition and, and what that means for him. So he'll be a household right. name for many, many years. Yeah, I think so. Um, so one of the things that we were going to talk about was uh, the box office potential for Avatar, the way of the water, way of water. But I guess the good thing about us pushing this recording back is that we actually can see how much it opened to over the weekend. Um, Which is crazy. $134 million domestic opening. And I believe just over $435 million worldwide just to start. And that's in one weekend. That is very crazy. Um, I'll be perfectly honest. It was projected. Uh, so, a lot, so people that, I mean, I'm a, I'm not a big, I didn't see this. I saw the first one. I don't, I don't love it. I rewatched it again two weeks ago. I. Kind of, yeah. I rewatched it again two weeks ago. Just be like, okay, what if I do want to see the second one? I rewatched it two weeks ago. It's, I will never take this away from it. It's a gorgeous movie. You know, he really pushed the limits of like what you can do with like technology and visuals and like, and I hear he does that even more in this one. Um, Hard to imagine, but because wow. But but I just didn't think the story for the first one was that great, and I don't think it's that entertaining. And what's funny is that everyone who has reviewed this movie that likes it have all they've all talked about how visually great it is. I read someone who gave it a four star review out of four but then complained about the story and how the story wasn't all that original, but still gave it four stars. Cause you know, it's pretty. <laughs> Looks on everything. We know that is, uh, the plot <laughs> is the foundation of your movie. And I mean, in keeping with what you said, like just I'll preface by saying, I haven't gone back to the movie since 2009 or 2010, whenever I saw it for the first time. And yeah. I think a large part of, it just lacks originality. It's like, as you've heard, I'm sure compared, it's dances with wolves with, or Pocahontas with blue people. And that doesn't yep. mean it's not a great movie, but it's going to knock it down a couple of pegs by that lack of originality. Yep. And I haven't really felt, I'm not that excited. I remember you saying that in an episode and I agree with you. I'm not that excited for it. I'll probably, probably be seeing it this week. So I'm, and I'm interested to see it, but yep. uh, I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to see it do good though. I want to see it do good. I don't want to see it win any major awards like for, what's yeah. it nominated for best is it drama or well, is it well, yeah. yeah so like so like yeah yeah because we're because we're talking about the golden globes a little bit yeah it did get nominated for best drama um it's actually picked up a lot of like uh nominations like for all like these like like critics choice and stuff like that leading up to like the oscars it's probably going to get a best picture nomination um i feel bad talking badly with about it. I haven't seen it. yeah especially with 10 slots i'm gonna reserve <laughs> my judgment but i am not that enthralled about it but yeah uh you know is it was projected to open to 150, 175. Um, and I will, even though I'm like, I don't want to, I'm not going to come off as a hater. I'm just going to say this like in a, a really realistic way because some people have been like, oh, like it opened less to what it was projected to. The thing is, though, is that this isn't like a Russian sea kind of movie. People want like the right screening, the right format, the right everything for it. Because like we said, it's, True. it's a pretty movie. And like you want to see it at its best, right? It's also three hours and twelve minutes, so like uh, there, it's it, you have to really kind of plan that out. Um, totally. So like that, the thing is, it's gonna leg out. I think a lot through like the holidays, like throughout the the Christmas week and then through the New Year. Uh, the first one did a similar thing. Now, do I think it's gonna have that same uh, longevity as the first movie did? I don't think so. Um, and you know james cameron has said that he feels like this needs to make like 2.1 2.3 billion worldwide to like break even and I, I, that sounds like more of like his lofty expectations rather than like the studio's expectations for it um you know i someone made a good point about this about this movie so like the climate in like 2009 when the, the first one came out people were kind of going to see it i guess multiple times so they you know it was just a different time when that movie came out um i think in yeah in the years since though like we've seen a lot of things that have come like you know and he's talked about this in interviews and he kind of sounds kind of grumpy but he brings up the marvel stuff a lot and how they've kind of like flooded the market and how like you know he doesn't really like that and i think right and i think in my head it's like i think you're kind of upset that all these other types of movies have kind of come in the wake of you making avatar that maybe 
they won't look at like what you're trying to make in the same way they did back in 2009. Um, totally. Now, to his credit, like from what I've heard from like critics and other people who have seen it, he really did something truly remarkable with it visually, even more than like the first movie. So, I mean, like clearly there's still like, he still, he knows what he's talking about in terms of that. Like he knows like he didn't want to release this until like he felt like he can do all the things that he wanted to do with uh, the technology for it. Um, I, I just, you know, I, it sucks because I want to be excited for it. Like I've been excited for a lot of movies this year, right? There's even been certain things where I'm like, I don't know if I want to see it, but I'll check it out. And I, that makes it surprise you. Right, right. So like I though, I told my buddy this too. I turned down two press screenings for this movie. I got invited to two, and I was like, ah. Uh, and it was more of an issue of like, I don't really want to see it. Kind of. Also, there was the time. There was like, it's three hours. True. It's three awesome. hours, twelve yeah, minutes. Hike. Yeah, and it's just like. And the screenings were until like eight or nine. And I was like, no, I won't get out until like like midnight. <laughs> like, no. And then it was an issue of like, okay, do I just see it on my own time? And then and I just thought about the time again, like three hours and 12 minutes. Like, it's a lot of time. <laughs> you have plenty of opportunities to see it. So I don't blame you for not jumping on your first or second or even your third chance because it's going to be in theaters for God knows how long. It's going to be, it's going to have a long run on streaming and all that. Yeah. So the time will come. Um, too about uh, I, I'm hoping it does well, but I don't know that I'm necessarily hoping it does well to finance five sequels for the rest of the decade and into the 2030s. That's an issue I have with this movie. So that is, uh, I'm glad you said that because what he said was like, you know, if it didn't do as well as they wanted to, right, we would we would get the third one, but we might not get like, what was it, how many more? Four or five? <laughs> like, seven plans yeah yeah like, right. that's crazy um <laughs> like, that's too many avatar movies that's too, quickly. too many too many avatar movies too many and not anything you, and not you putting any time to putting true lies out on 4k so we can actually have a proper like, <laughs> like <laughs> here you go yeah you know, like like to see dude, property yeah like do people have been asking you for like a proper release of true lies so they can watch it in the best way possible. And you're like, oh, it's coming. And you've been saying that for like years, but no, you're busy making Avatar movies. Um, I agree with that. Like, I, I don't want to see it fail because like, like, I don't like seeing any movies fail. Um, no, of course. But, but I, like you, don't know if I don't need a franchise from, from this. <laughs> no. Like, I think it did what Top Gun Maverick did was a legacy sequel. Not that we know what's going to happen with that, or at least I don't, but it was a long awaited legacy sequel that it did exactly what it needed to do. You don't hear talks about sequels already, like before this right. that one even came out. Two is fine. Again, like I know they got 90 or 95% of three film. That's fine too. I'm sure I don't, I have no doubt that this movie is going to do well financially, even if it's not what they hope, but yeah. four five. And then if those do well, six and seven, like you've heard James Cameron say that I have no I- excitement for that, that it, it, it Honestly, it just seems like it's going to be fl- another property flooding the market, like in the in the vein that Marvel movies kind of have over the last few years. Yeah, the very, the very, no the one, very, the very thing he's been complaining about during this whole press <laughs> press uh, jug He'll for, be contributing yeah. to himself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, apparently, uh, Deadline says that the movie cost four hundred sixty million dollars. If you're like, and that's before uh, marketing spend as well. Um, but they were saying like the guess the, the good thing like people aren't worried that it missed its projections because like it's going to get a lot of mileage from like 3D ticket sales like IMAX screens uh you know it's going I I you know what? he did this with Titanic he did it with Avatar they were movies that like they kind of hit at the right time and they laid out and made a lot of money um you know the the Titanic thing still like blows my mind because like I, I, you know I'll be honest I haven't truly loved a, a James Cameron movie since True Lies which is why I brought up True Lies because I don't love Titanic either <laughs> and uh, and then Avatar same uh, same feeling idea. same feeling there but like uh, you no know, I mean but then like a lot of a lot of cr- critics have said you can't really bet against James Cameron and I guess it's kind of true like I mean like Box you know I'm, yeah and. What I am wondering, though, 
um, domestically, because right now this year, Top Gun Maverick is the highest grossing movie of the year domestically, like $718.7 million, right? I would love for it to close out the year as the highest grossing movie of 2022. I 100% agree with you, and I hope it does, but what do you think? This is its only competition right now, right? Because Black Panther isn't going to do it. Uh, it's it, Black Panther has made a lot of money, but it's not going to like come close to what the first movie made here in the states. Um, you know, I'm just I'm going to put all my money on Tom Cruise <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no. yeah, and just say that it, it's going to keep that title. I think it's going to still be the highest grossing movie of 2022, and. Um, Challenge by saying I think I wouldn't be surprised. I guess if Avatar two does top it, but I hope Top Gun holds it. Right. Very enthusiastically hope that that's what happens. But I mean, like you just said, you can't bet against James Cameron, and it has been thirteen years. That is a lot of build for this, so we'll, we'll see. I, another weekend will will be a good indicator, I think, as to how it's caught on. Yeah, I think so too. And like, did like also made a good point. Uh, they said the Friday to Saturday decline for it was only sixteen percent. And they said that's the best Friday to Saturday hold for a year in Tin Pole release, beating out The Rise of Skywalker, which dropped forty seven percent from Friday to Saturday. Force Awakens dropped forty three percent from Friday to Saturday. Spider Way No Way Home dropped thirty nine percent from Friday to Saturday. The Last Jedi thirty nine percent from Friday to Saturday, and Rogue One thirty five percent. So dropping just sixteen percent compared to like all those other big movies is a good sign that it, yeah, that it'll have some legs. I think. Um. Yeah, you know, you know, make make your money. Just don't be Top Gun. I'll I'll just say that. <laughs> it, it it won't be. I'm sure. Obviously, having not seen it yet, I don't know, but I have that feeling. Top Gun is just something special, man. That movie was right. fantastic. And I'm not even talking like globally. Yeah, Avatar is probably going to outgross it like globally. Just don't beat it here. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I I, I want to like you know like when Top Gun came out over the summer, and then I just saw how like it was performing like un unlike any movie like that because usually like those there's like a big there's a big rush and then there's like kind of a steep decline sometimes with movies like that and that just wasn't the case and it appealed to like everyone it appealed to people like <laughs> it appealed to people who grew up watching top gun it even appealed to like younger people who were like maybe just recently yep. seen top gun or um i took my little brother to a press screening for it before i think like three weeks before it came out he had never seen top gun really loved Top Gun Maverick, made him want to watch the first one. So there's like, there's that too. <laughs> yeah. So there's like, yeah. People talk Top Gun's way for sure. Yeah. Um, like it was kind of an anomaly, you know, the box office. I mean, but like a very good one. A great and, point. And an anomaly for sure. Cause like, I'd say more than three quarters of legacy sequels in the first one just shit. And this one was not only competent, but it was fantastic, which is another right. reason I just wanted to finish off that year strong yeah um so yeah we're saying it right now uh we hope avatar makes some money because that's really good for the industry yep but we also don't want you to outgrow stop Gun maverick so uh because i want i want to write my like end of the year box office preview saying that top Gun maverick is the highest grossing movie of the year i hope i'm reading that from you i want to do because it deserves it for sure uh all right, let's uh, kind of jump into, I guess, the Golden Globe nominations. Um, you know, so this, this was a tough one because, like, I know the the Golden Globe, the Golden Globes have gotten a lot of shit because uh, the Hollywood Foreign Press, like, I think it was two years ago, when they got kind of called out by the media and like for there's issues about inclusion and like race and like a bunch of other things that were going on within the Hollywood foreign press. There actually weren't even like any people of color, a part of the Hollywood foreign press. That was a big issue uh, with that. Um, the issue got so bad that NBC was like, yo, we're not going to air the golden globes this year. Um, it got really bad when Tom Cruise was like, I'm giving back my golden globes. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, Speaking of the man. Speaking of the man, like, don't piss off Tom Cruise, which is probably why he didn't get nominated for the Best Actor of the Golden Globes. They're probably like, yeah, you're probably, you're probably gonna give that back if you win it. <laughs> um, uh, it's nice to see his movie did though. They gave him some love. Yeah, they did give him love there. Um, you know, and like a lot of people felt some kind of way when they made the announcement that NBC was like, you know what? It's been like a year. We didn't televise it last year because you know 
bad Hollywood foreign press. <laughs> bad on you. But we we hear they're making some changes, so we're gonna tell them. Yep. And you know, this all comes down to like the you know, a lot of like the talent didn't want to be involved with the Golden Globes after all that stuff too. Um and if you know anything about the Golden Globes, even compared to like the other like award ceremonies, the Golden Globes used to get a lot of shit because it's like they would want people there who were like celebrities. So that's what they cared about at the, the Hollywood Forward Press, right? So not saying that someone like I'm using this as an example, not to say that she didn't necessarily deserve a nomination, but back when like Lady Gaga did American Horror Story, they nominated her uh for best actress okay. in limited series in a limited series. She won for that part. Um this is the kind of ceremony that would like nominate Julia Roberts just because she's Julia Roberts <laughs> or, or nominate like, you know, okay. back in the day, back in the day, nominate Tom Cruise. Cause like, you know, we want him there. It's always been viewed as like that kind of cer- ceremony, but it's also the most fun because the celebrities sit at cocktail tables and they drink and they get loose lips <laughs> and that's fun to watch. It's not as stuff. <laughs> it's not as stuffy as like the Oscars. Um, and, yeah, and what I've loved too about the Golden Globes is that I love that they nominate musical and comedy and then drama. So it gives like it gives like comedies a chance to kind of get in there a bit. Um, as well. Yeah, so I'm excited that they're back. You know, I I hope they made the appropriate changes. I think there's reasons why, like you know, uh, I don't think NBC would like kind of throw their hat back in the ring with them if like they didn't make some significant changes. Uh. So, you know, I, I, w- I went back and forth about covering it, but it is like one of the biggest, you know, awards coming up before the Oscars. Um, as moment. always, yeah, as always, the Golden Globes, they, they dominate some interesting choices sometimes. Um, sometimes they make you scratch your head. <laughs> um, but yeah. you know what? You know what? The nominees for Best Drama are kind of in line with like what I thought, I guess, would kind of be up. Like Top Gun Maverick. A lot of people would love to yep. see Tom Maverick actually win most of this award season. Hollywood Reporter wrote a really interesting article about why he could win, because like you know, oh, yeah. uh, box office matters in these kind of things. Like, they, and like totally, especially especially for an award ceremony, like especially like the Oscars, where ratings have like gone down like with in subsequent years. Because like a big complaint is that like, well, some of the people haven't even seen some of the movies that are nominated because they're usually smaller movies um right that's and, and to me that's on the people that because like if you want to see these movies you can definitely find them <laughs> and industry people so in that regard i i don't care about that criticism like just yeah you know, exactly. Exactly. I agreed. yeah but you know you nominate something like top gun and it's like the highest grossing movie of the year so far and hopefully it will continue to be the highest grossing movie of the year um yeah you get more eyes on your show yeah, you know, there are people that are like everyone saw it this year, so like they're curious to see if it all wins. Um, True, so I went, some, some viewers. Yeah, so <laughs> I wasn't surprised that I got nominated for uh, best picture drama. The Fablemans is Steven Spielberg, and I saw it. It's a really good movie. There are some people that don't like it. It's gotten like mixed. Yeah, there like well, it's gotten like like there are some people that I follow on Twitter that like I go back and forth with and I respect them as critics and like I talked about how much I loved it and they were like uh no <laughs> they just thought it they just yeah, thought it was kind of like they just thought it was kind of like a little emotionally like manipulative a little bit and like kind of tried to tug at the heartstrings too much and like but I mean like it's like a Steven Spielberg passion project I don't know how you like really kind of hate on that it a little bit and I'm not that's not going to put me off I don't think because I expect that going in and it's a movie about Steven Spielberg falling in love with cinema how is that not relatable to people like us i just think that it's going to be a movie i'm going to just like no matter what but yeah yeah, also interested to see i just looked up at box office um numbers yesterday and i was surprised it's not making any money but i mean steve i don't care that's true i I mean like so so we did um we did a recorded uh uh, 25th anniversary episode for goodwill hunting right and we actually brought that up we brought up the fable because i was like Goodwill Hunting in 1997 made over $200 million globally and like $138 million in the States, right? I feel like if something like The Fablements came out in 97, it probably could have made that much money then. It's just like a, movies, these adult skewing movies that kind of like are in that same vein, they haven't really hit that well box office wise in like a while. 
so I was just thinking, like, I was just telling my, uh, uh, actually, Merc with the movies, I was like, uh, it's crazy how that climate's changed. Like, you know, you could release a movie like Good Will Hunting 25 years ago, slowly roll it out and build interest. Mm-hmm. And then it makes at, then it makes that much money because not only is it right. now it's, it's getting good reviews and it gets, it's getting like Oscar nominations. Now, granted, Good Will Hunting came from Miramax and uh, <laughs> uh, the guy in charge there was known for being, uh, well, we know a lot about him now, but like he was known for being like a really pushy producer when it comes to like getting his stuff out there, especially for like Absolutely. Oscar especially for like Oscar campaigns and stuff. Um, but yeah, like we, we were saying how like the, that climate's completely changed. Like, I think like, it's crazy that even the steel, the Steven Spielberg, like drama, like, isn't making a lot of money. And you know, he had the same problem last year with like West Side Story, where it didn't make a lot of money uh, either. And actually had like a pretty decent release date in December, like during the holiday season where like, you would expect that to get like a little bit of a rush and like it didn't do well i mean it, it kind of shows that even people like spielberg is not safe from like a very changing like box office like environment it's completely I know, different. It's crazy to see that i couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing when i was looking at the numbers but i mean yeah anybody like steven spielberg is a, a god of what he does so i have complete yep. faith all i'd like to see is that movie get the, the critical and and award season love that it no doubt deserves money at the end of the day isn't everything Right, but uh, I'm excited um, and for then, that. And of course, Avatar: The Way of Water got nominated as well, and Elvis. So Elvis has been like for a lot of people a surprise. I mean, I know they were like they expected Myself Austin Butler. They were expecting Austin Butler to get nominated because like they were like, hey, wait, anyone that had any criticisms about the movie, none of those criticisms were about his performance. Everyone thought he did a magnificent job, right? <laughs> but this one girl, she made a good point. She's like, I know you guys are all like surprised that Elvis is kind of like been a major part of this award season but like keep in mind it's the movie that your mother is still talking about and it came out during the summer and i was like that's true and, it, it really, yeah you know we, wait with that same discussion that we just had like about the fablemans where it's like older skewing movies or or it's harder for them to make money elvis did skew old but it made a lot of money i mean i think it's just like he's i think it's because of elvis presley himself like you know like totally. icon icon and then, you know, Baz Luhrmann directed it with you know, his signature Baz Luhrmann flash. And I'm sure that appealed to like a, a lot of people who like his other movies like Moulin Rouge and Romeo and Juliet and uh, Great Gatsby. So like, I, I think I think that it, it tapped into like the right time and market. And, and I do, I agree with what she says because like, I know a lot of older people that are still talking about Elvis, like how great it was and how great he was in it. So I'm actually, I was initially surprised that it was kind of in this mix a lot, but like, it's true. Like, you know, like we said, making money matters for some of these things. And like it, and, and the movie didn't get like great reviews. It, it got like, it's still fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, but it didn't like get overwhelmingly positive reviews. Um, but yeah, it is, a, it is a movie that, you know, a lot of our moms are still talking about in December. So I agree with you. I'm not surprised for Austin Butler, and I'm happy for him, and no doubt he deserves it. But yeah, I was very surprised to see the the nod for uh, for drama. But be interested to see if it uh, follows suit come the Oscars time. I don't know that yeah. it will, but and what's uh, what's the last one? Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. Let me click more. One second. So we got Top Gun, Maverick, The Fablements, Avatar, The Way of Water, Elvis. I think there's one more. Let me see. Let me make sure. Um, I'm trying to like think about like what I would want to call for uh, so far. Uh, I honestly think that uh, Top Gun has a really honest chance to take that. Away. Yeah. Like, uh, especially if you're like, you know. Oh yeah. So also, Tar with Kate Blanchett is on there as well. Yeah. I uh, I do have a copy of it. I haven't watched it yet. Um, but I've heard I've heard mostly great things about her in it um that uh, Kate Blanchett is just amazing in it and likely they say kind of likely to win. yeah she's she could like read the phone book and people would be enthralled by it <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, she could do no wrong honestly um but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna call I'm calling it for Top Gun I think Top Gun wins this okay. award um but God wouldn't it be funny if like Elvis <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if Elvis won uh, that, would be, <laughs> that would probably be yeah borderline uh, as upset I guess as I could be for an award like yeah. some that I take very seriously, <laughs> others not so much. But 
I would be very surprised if it, it went, did, but I still see him for like a judge. Yeah, they were there were some people that were like kind of like critical about it being in the drama category because they were like, why wasn't it in a musical or comedy? And I was like, well, it's not a musical. I get what you're, yeah. I get what they're saying because it's like heavy on music, uh, but it is not. It's not you know Chicago or Lame Lim or Lame is Rob, so like, it's not like that. Um, and like you know, and I know in the and I know in the past they've nominated people like things in weird categories. I remember when The Martian got nominated for best musical or comedy, and it won. Uh, <laughs> what? And then like and then they they tried to explain like how they determine what's a musical and comedy, and it was like a percentage of like jokes in the movie that made it push over into it being considered a comedy. I know The Martian does have funny moments in it, but there's no way I would have like looked at that and be like, yeah, that's a musical or comedy. <laughs> Yeah, that was one no, of many yeah, on no. choices. <laughs> More excited for the musical or comedy nominees than I am for the dramas this year, which yeah. is, I've never said that in any previous uh, yeah. Golden Globes before. So, so there are some there's some interesting one here. Uh, Babylon. I'm actually seeing that this week. Now here's the deal. <laughs> I made I made a comment about how Avatar is three hours and twelve minutes. Babylon is three hours and nine minutes, but this looks far more entertaining <laughs> than Avatar. <laughs> anything damien chazelle so yeah yeah it just looks and like and like when people the initial press readings where some people were like oh this movie is a mess and are right, then there were people that like loved it and i was like yeah I like a, yeah i was like you know what i like a combination of all those things because it, it might be a, a fun messy movie i don't know <laughs> who knows <laughs> um but yeah you know wrong so uh, then of course everything everywhere all at once this has been like a uh an interesting one during award season because I know it had like it has like a lot of it's a fan favorite for a lot of people. Um, uh, there are actually people that I don't see on Twitter. I've seen like fighting over you know it not getting enough attention, and then people being like it's getting too much attention. It's not that great. Um, you know, I think out of, out of the bunch, it's the most unique one. I think of like all those movies. Um, I, it took me a while to see it, and when I finally saw it, I wish I didn't wait as long as I did uh, to watch it, because uh, it, it was really, really good. Watch. Yeah, it's a, yeah, an amazing movie, and I'm glad, it's cool to see people like Michelle Yeoh getting her due, even though she's been kicking ass in the industry for like a long time, but I feel like people are just like, oh, like, look at her, I'm like, gosh, she's been in a lot of things. <laughs> have a, a more mainstream, accessible kind of role over here and get the credit that she deserves, because she is fantastic. Yep, I think it's so too. Great in it. Uh, and then of course we have Glass Onion and Knives Out sequel, which I you know I don't mind that being there. I thought it was really good. I thought it was like even a little better than the first movie. It was the cast was like really good and it's funny and you can tell that everyone's having a good time in it. I think that was like the most I like got out of watching it. Like you know I I, I love Edward Norton. I've and I he's like one of my favorite actors, but like he's he used to have a rep for like being hard to work with, or like maybe he took himself too seriously. And I right. just love, I love in the last few years, he's stopped doing that. Like, I think, it, I think it kind of started with Burt Man, where he's like, all right, I'm going to like play this part and kind of poke fun of myself. And that's kind of what that role was. And like, he was finally in on the joke. <laughs> and, uh, and then like when I was watching uh, this Knives Out sequel, it was like, he was, it looks like he was just having fun. And like, like, finally, like not taking himself too seriously and just like enjoying himself. And, uh, that was nice to see. And the whole cast is like that too. Kay Hudson also hilarious in it. Like uh, they're all everyone just looks like they went out there and like we we're gonna play in this like little theater camp kind of environment for like because they were like yeah. I, I heard when they made it, they were actually it was, it was during COVID, so they can only really hang out with each other. They can really leave like where they were shooting. Um so that made them they said a lot closer as a cast because they, they just had to like spend time together and it kind of showed benefit. Yeah, That's and it great. shows like the chemistry really shows with like everyone involved in it. Um, this other one, Triangle of Sadness, I haven't seen. Um, I have not seen that yeah. when you can. Oh, is it good? That was a that was a nice surprise. It was yeah, Palm Door winner too. So in that regard, oh, like I'm not necessarily rooting for it to win because it's already got arguably one of the biggest praises it could get for the year. But it yeah. was a fantastic watch. Woody Harrelson's great in it. It is a an amazing satire, I'd say on par with if not maybe slightly above the menu C comparable for sure oh i love the menu okay that's a good comparison menu, i'm so disappointed oh, <laughs> oh no actually yeah, i've seen i love it i love the menu so if so if that is kind of the so vibe go watch triangle sadness 
All right, all right. If that's a similar yeah. vibe, then, I, then I'll check it out then, because I really like the menu a lot. I actually wish that movie was doing like a little better. Um, yeah, I have that written on my notes to chat about because I was. I remember I said to my buddy when we were left the cinema that it was at the time one of my most uh, enjoyed theatrical experiences of the year, and I would still say that it held up. It blew me out of the water. It yeah, was awesome. I I agree. I think that um. I, I actually went with my little brother to see it and I thought it might be like too quirky and a little niche for him to enjoy it. But like he really right. like he really liked it and thought it was like it's it's funny. It's like darkly funny. But like it but like yeah. it was what another good it was like it reminded me of like what we were saying with like the knives out. Like every everyone in that cast looked like they were just having fun. Like like enjoying themselves and like just came to play. And like that was like it was really fun to watch and like I don't know. Uh the lead actress, uh, Anya Taylor, she's just uh, amazing. And like, I feel like everything that she's been in, like, she just gets better and better and better. And like, <laughs> yeah, she does. She's like, <laughs> yeah. I just remember her like holding her, like, her holding her own in like scenes with Ray Fines in that movie, where like they're just like, I was like, like, clearly he's the veteran, right? But like, she was just like toe to toe with him, like, every moment, every beat. It was like amazing to watch goes because like i've been following her since she was in eggers the witch and if i don't think there's anything i know her from before and uh, i've loved her and everything i've seen her in and she, she'll be a arguably she already is a top actress working today but i'm sure as the years go by it'll only be kinder to her she is fantastic and i can't wait to see what she does she's great yep. really happy to see her get the nomination too for that her, her yeah. and ray fines both her and ray fines you know what i kind of you know the, the, this the category for best musical or comedy is so packed. I was like trying to wonder because, like, I thought I, I thought the movie itself should have got nominated, but then I don't know what I would take out of what's listed here. <laughs> right. There's Babylon. Uh, the I'm gonna butcher this name. The Banshees of, oh, um, I think you're right. The one with Colin Farrell. Uh, yeah, it's got getting a lot, yeah, it's getting a lot of great reviews too. And then of course, everything everywhere all at once. I mean, I think that deserves to be there. Yeah, knives out. I guess it deserves to be there too. I mean, I haven't seen Triangle Sadness, but you said it was uh, really good. So, yeah, Angel in a perfect world. I like to have them both in there, but um, I don't know. I, I think I'd have more fun watching the menu, but yeah, they're, again, they're interchangeable. But you'll you'll love it. I'm sure they're great. Yeah, that is yeah. The, that's a, that's what I was saying. It's a stacked category. I'm more excited for that than I am drama. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to say. So I'm trying to I'm trying to base this on like what the Golden Globes tend to do sometimes um <laughs> I don't know, man um i and i and i think it would deserve it i think i want to give it to everything everywhere all at once and now I'm, bad call. now I'm saying this i i'm i have the freedom to change my mind after i see babylon and after i watch triangle of sadness based yeah. on your recommendation but uh, for now i'm going with that one just uh very good movie, very creative movie. I think, and I, I think the Golden Globes like to award stuff like that sometimes. And, uh, yeah, it, it got, it, you know, it makes me wonder, like, with like the Oscars, because, you know, of course, they don't split up like the drama and, uh, comedy category. And right. then, and then, you know, they have this like thing where they can nominate up to 10 movies if they want. Um, I, I think that even, it, it, I think it gets a nomination there too. It'll get in. But I guess it. I guess it would. I guess it would be determined by like where they're gonna cap the number of nominees at because they can, if they want to, instead of going for a full ten slate. Um, but yeah, I think I think it would. You know, I I would have called Babylon, but then they got such a mixed response from like critics early on that like yeah, that I I wanted to do. I wanted to win something major. Like I have nothing but excitement for that movie. But uh, I, I can't argue with your logic for for everything everywhere. Yep. So, uh, best actress, motion picture drama, Kate Blanchett for Tar, Olivia Coleman for Empire of Light. Haven't seen it, but I'm very surprised that it has a 46% on Ron Tomatoes, and that's a Sam Mendes movie. So I was really shocked. That's wow. Yeah, yeah. I was 46. like, Jesus. Um, Viola Viola Davis for The Woman King. This was was this one was a shock, but it doesn't shock me because this is the Golden Globes. Uh, Anna Darmus got a nomination for Blonde. And then uh, Michelle Williams, of course, nominated for The Fablemans. Um, everyone loves Michelle Williams. Uh, I love Michelle Williams. I also love that. Honestly? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, what were you going to say? 
Anna was recognized for her work in Blonde. I haven't seen it, so I know that makes no sense, but um, just it's on my slate to watch before the end of the year. But as the reception came out, I just kind of pushed it off. But she yeah. no doubt encapsulated that role. And despite what you want to say about like the criticism the movie got, she, she put out that interview recently, I don't know who with, where she was kind of defending what the movie is really trying to be about. And it is. Right. You know, she she did awesome in the role. At least it looks like so far. So I am really happy to see her get some love because she got shit on, and that movie got shit on. And I think it's gonna be good. It's just people people's expectations got in the way. I think with that one, so good for yeah. her. Yeah. Um, no, no, you're good. I I I did watch it. Um, I gave it credit for being trying to be different. I mean, like it wasn't like I mean, like he was pretty. The director was pretty honest early on that this was a sort of like fictionalized telling of her life right so it wasn't like based totally in fact uh i think people still kind of for, yeah i still people forgot that though when they were watching it and when they were reviewing it um i know it did get some criticism because they thought that like a lot of people think that a woman should have directed it maybe they would have handled certain scenes differently and i guess there is an argument to be made for that um you know they a lot of people talk about like how like when it's a male director and it's a and it's female subject matter like this, like the male gaze is way different from like the female gaze when it comes to like depicting some of these things. Um, totally. Um, I think a good example of that is like a movie like Hustlers, which you know on the surface is about strippers, drugging people and taking their money, but handled directed by a woman, so it's handled a lot differently than I think if a man would have directed that movie, um, where at, you know. I think if a man directed that movie, there would be more of like an eye candy part of it. And somehow the female director directing Hustlers, it was all about empowerment rather than just like gawking at them. So I think there's like a, there's yeah. a, there's an argument to be made for that. Anna Darmus is very good in it. Uh, she more than proved herself to be a capable actress in it. Um, I think people, awesome. I think people complaining are mostly complaining about the movie itself. Um, and you know what? It didn't get nominated for Best Picture. So cool. Like acknowledge the acknowledge the person who like yeah. did pretty pretty good in the movie. And um but it was a left field one for me because I because it, it got like so much criticism um that I thought they weren't gonna get it wasn't gonna get noticed at all. But like right. but you know, I think I agree with your argument that like you know, you don't like the movie, whatever, but like you have a great performance in a mediocre movie, shouldn't you still acknowledge that the performance was great? Yeah. So Good for her. Um, Good for them for holding the ground. She's great. Um, and you know, it's you know, she's like the the newbie in this little group because like everyone else has been nominated for a lot of things, have won awards. Yep. Uh, she is the underdog for sure, but in very good company though, with a lot of great yeah, actors in this category. Um, you know, it was crazy. Uh, I mean, I love Viola Davis, and I saw the Woman King, and I remember watching it, and she wasn't really a part of the conversation about nominations for a little bit because like well, some people thought like some of her supporting cast like just had like a better showing in it not that she was bad but like they were you know some of her co-stars got called out a bit more for like some of their work in it but you know it's viola davis so <laughs> um she's, a bat. she's yeah, great yeah kind of can't count her out and now that people like olivia coleman you know again kate blanchett i i'm i need to still see the movie just basing this on what people have said, it seems like Kate Blanchett might win this one. Um, okay. Uh, but honestly, if any of these women won, I would be perfectly okay with it. Um, I'm not surprised to see Viola nominated, but I, I wasn't expecting to see much of a Woman King nominated, so good for her. Love Viola. Yep. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of those performances I still get to see as well, so including hers. Yep. So yep. I have no input um, yet, but... The uh, best actor drama is a nice little mix of like some, some comeback kids, some newbies, <laughs> a couple of newbies. Yeah. Uh, I guess Austin Butler and Jeremy Pope are the newbies. Austin Butler got nominated for Elvis, of course. Jeremy Pope got nominated for The Inspection, which I saw last week. It's really good. He was really good in it too. Yeah, he, as Gabriel Union's also very good in it. I kind of wish that like she was getting a little bit more attention. Uh, she's never really played a role like that before and she was amazing in it. Um, that movie on my radar, and it's is it an A twenty four movie, or am I making that up? Uh, I think so, actually. Yeah, I think so. so. I love anything they put out. So yeah, for that. 
And then uh, the comeback kid in this category is Brendan Fraser for The Whale, yes. who has uh, been getting like a ton of standing ovations at various film festivals and that make him cry because like, I think he's just so excited to kind of be back in the mix. And I saw the movie. I Okay, I will say this about the movie. I didn't love it, but I he's very good. And uh, it's a very uh, honest, heartfelt performance and like uh or at, at least are you an aronofsky yeah. fan like have you seen most of his stuff i see i see most of his stuff there's some things i love like i love i love record for a dream that's like one of my favorite movies but then he makes stuff oh, yeah. like mother and then, <laughs> and then i'm like uh yeah, i'm a fan of mother i love it I mean, it's not <laughs> my favorite aronofsky but like that movie blew me away i remember seeing it in theaters and being like what the fuck am i watching but i was just curious so, how so his filmography so that's how like my friend felt. I remember we saw it opening night, and I should have known that something was amiss because there weren't a lot of people there on opening night. And uh, when it was over, my friend was like, "What in the clusterfuck did we just watch?" <laughs> I was like, "I know, I know." And he was like, "You yeah. probably liked it." I was like, "No, I know, I'm not," because usually I'm the one that's like, "No, I, I liked it." And I was like, "No, I, I really don't know what to think right now." <laughs> I had to like sit on it for like a little bit. I was like, "No, I don't think I enjoyed that," mm-hmm. but like. You have to reflect on absolutely. It would wouldn't make sense to walk in and be like, "Yeah, I know everything that I just watched." It's 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 like almost in that regard, like a Nolan film where you just got to take some time to think about what you yeah. saw. But uh, I his filmography is bulletproof, if you ask me. So I, I've been really anticipating the whale for sure. And Brendan yeah. Fraser's coming back. Love that yep. they nominated him. Yeah, All and um, considered. yeah, and I think throughout this award season, um. And that this is going to get like I guess more tricky because like of course this is just for drama like the Golden Globes they split up like we said drama and comedy, and then right. of course with like with like the Oscars you know they don't do the whole like ten slots for actors it's five so it's like you know who will make that cut and who won't. Um, a lot of people just just award season in general have Austin Butler or Brendan Fraser uh, as their front runners. There's also a nod for like Colin Farrell as well. He's of course, nominated in the different category, but like he's getting a lot of like uh, praise for his performance in that particular movie yep. as well. Um, it'd be a great comeback story to watch Brendan Fraser win, uh, and that's what I'm rooting for. Honestly, I'd and, love to see that for him. And I think that's what I think that his, you know, not even just talking about the Hollywood Foreign Press, but when it comes down to like all these other award shows, and especially like when you get to the Academy Awards and people in the Academy are voting and it's other actors. I kind of think that he'll be a favorite amongst them because, you know, he, it, I don't think a lot of people have ex- expected a performance like this from him and he's been gone a while and he's been gone a while and everyone likes a good comeback story. And yeah. And at least it's a well-deserved one. At least it's not like, Oh, he wasn't that good in it. Like, no, he was great. So, right. I mean, they're not, they're, and they're he's not a, a stretch. Like he genuinely deserved it. Right. And he's a very proud person. You can tell that he's just so happy to be like, in the mix again and like it's been like all his interviews for this movie have been like really just nice and sweet and he's just like you know he he's you can tell he's genuinely like happy to be involved in all this stuff again um yeah um i guess like the transformative performance though austin butler i mean like he he really immersed himself in playing elvis um well yeah he had a tough time getting out of character did he not getting out of character yeah yeah. yeah yeah Um, and I also, you know, Baz Luhrmann said that when they per- when they shot concert stuff, that they pretty much shot full concerts. Uh, which is, that there is a apparently longer cut of this movie that it he it can't exist according to the director. Uh, so he really put on like a show every time he performed. Um, and you know what? A lot of these award ceremonies, like when people play real people, <laughs> um, especially when they nail it. Um, and I don't want to like not mention Hugh Jackman for The Sun and Bill Nye for Living. I haven't seen either movie. Um, Nor have I. But I kind of don't think they're in the conversation that much for this stuff. I think it does come I down to... Aust- yeah, I think it does come down to Austin Butler and Brendan Fraser. I'm going to go with a slight slight nod to Brendan Fraser, but wouldn't be surprised if Austin Butler won. I wouldn't be surprised with either name that they call out, but yeah, slightly rude for Brendan. Um, on that note, the son father is that right? right right and it was more or less regarded as somewhat of an underwhelming i don't know if it's yeah. the word in there, disappointment but yeah good for you like 
Yeah. He's great. I haven't seen it, but I still one of the guy one of the guys that uh David Gonzalez, he he runs like Real Talk Inc. on Instagram and like has a real Chronicles podcast. He he'll like, had him on recently, I think. Yeah, yeah. He'll put yeah. yeah, he'll put like on his story like like a snippet of like a, a of his review or whatever. And I was like going through the story and he got to that movie and I was so shocked to see he gave it like one star and like he ripped it apart. Like and like so I so that was like the start of like me seeing like, oh wow, this this is not getting good reviews. And then I like, read other people's and like it was like you said, like viewed as pretty underwhelming and the and the D word <laughs> disappointment. <laughs> well, it sucks to see. I uh, didn't really catch a whole lot of buzz around it, and I guess now I know why. Yep. So um, this is an interesting category because there's I, I, a lot of fun girls in the um, best actress, most in picture, musical or comedy. Uh, Margot Robbie for Babylon. Uh, Leslie mm-hmm. Manville for Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Anya Taylor Joy for The Menu. Emma Thompson for Good Luck to You. Leo Grande. And then Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's uh, a mixed bag. Wow. And it's a mixed bag of like a lot of uh, you know, a lot of these girls I like a lot. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I know I've, that's a tough one. So I've heard great things. Even people that didn't like Babylon have said that Margot Robbie was really good in it. Like great. Um, I feel like she's going to be one of those people that gets nominated for like Oscars for like a long time and won't win for like a long time. And then she's going to do something like kind of okay, and then it's going to be like a career Oscar <laughs> when they give it to her. Oh, when they oh, give it to like her, like Leo, like, like Leo DiCaprio, <laughs> like for the like yeah. the Revenant. Like yeah, you should give that to him a long time ago. <laughs> Well, yeah, he's great in the Revenant, no doubt, and his physical performance is fantastic. You know, he deserved that a long time before. Yeah, when he won it, I I wouldn't be surprised if Margot Robbie followed those footsteps. Honestly, she's a fantastic actress, but yeah, she's we'll just you know what? This year. It's all it's always that it's always that year where like someone's slightly better than her, you know? <laughs> where it's like oh, she's yeah, not exactly. front, she's not the front runner. Like fuck, um, you know what? This would be another one though. I mean, even though I I could see them. And she would deserve it. Michelle Yeoh, I think, has a decent shot. Again, because like they like people like these stories too. Even though she's been in the industry for like so long, like you know, it seems like everyone's just taking notice now, which is kind of disappointing because she's been in so many yeah. great things. But like people like that story as well. You know, they like to kind of. Yeah. And it's not. And hers isn't really like a comeback story. It's just like they're noticing me now story. <laughs> so like it's uh... yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Finally getting um, the recognition she deserves. Yeah, and like you know, she probably should have gotten it a long time ago. Absolutely. Uh, but it's cool to see her have her moment. I actually, yeah, you know, I'm gonna give it to her just because you know, I think that it would be nice to see her win, and she's great in the movie. Um, but who knows? I might change my mind when I see Babylon. <laughs> Wait for to see that absolutely, and then the, the Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. I hadn't heard until the nominees came out. I was not familiar with that one, and then. The other one, I think maybe the third one you mentioned. Or oh, uh, I don't have them in front of me, so I can't see. Good luck to you, Leo Grande. I have not seen. I've heard great things about Emma Thompson in it. I just haven't seen it. Um, I was sent a copy of Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris like three months ago, and I never watched it. I feel really bad. So I do have it. <laughs> I, should, I should maybe. You know, it's like one of those movies where it's like you have to be in the mood. Like, oh, yeah, I want to watch Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Um, I have to be in the mood for that. And like, you know, I guess in the last three months, I haven't been in the mood to watch to watch it. But in the spirit of being fair, in the spirit of being fair, I should probably take a look at it. <laughs> but um, interested to see the performance Margo gives, but I agree, Michelle will be a great pick. Yep. Um, the guy, the guy part of this category is a lot of stacked talent here too. Uh, I've heard good things about Diego Calva's uh, performance in Babylon. He's nominated. Um, Daniel Craig is nominated for Glass Onion, Knives Out, Mystery. Adam Driver is nominated uh, for great. White. Yeah, Ryan Driver's got nominated for White Noise. Um, it actually premieres, I think, on Netflix at the end of this month. Uh, okay. Colin, Farrell, Colin Farrell, we mentioned, and of course, Ray Fiennes for The Menu as well. Love um, that he snuck Ray Fiennes in there. I'm glad they stuck him in, too. I would like to see him win. I actually would like to see Daniel Craig win, too. I think he's hilarious in uh, these Knives Out movies. And he's having, not, not to say that he didn't enjoy playing James Bond, but I think he's having fun stepping out of that. Yeah, I'm not getting beat up all the time and all these injuries. Yeah. Uh, I can't yeah. blame him for not you know, for being excited, but he had his time. Yeah. Um, love Colin. Did you have a chance to see Banshees yet? 
No, I haven't seen it yet. I've heard great things about him in it. I know he is kind of the front runner in this category. Um, oh yeah. But yeah, I've, I've heard great things about his performance and uh, the other guys too. Uh, Brendan Gleeson, I heard it also very great in it. Um, but what I was told from a lot of people is it, it, it apparently it is a actors movie. That's what a lot of people have mentioned to me about it. That it, it's and if a, there's any word of advice. I give you going in. If you're familiar with Martin McDonough's work, I actually just got a rewatch of Seven Seconds Pass and the other I night. Do love, I do love. I do love. I do love that movie. <laughs> yeah, and in, in Bruges, fan yeah. of that. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. So really if good. you're like me, with that casting, those two going into another Martin McDonough film, I was expecting something along along the lines of In Bruges. I had seen the trailer, but just was still it's Martin McDonough, those two boys. I was expecting something a straight out comedy. It's more of a drama yeah. than you would think. There's some dark comedy in there, so. I would yeah. have liked to know that going in, but all that being said, it was a great, great flick. I loved it thoroughly, and I hope it you know scoops up everything. It was fantastic. Although Colin, by no means, was not underwhelming. He was fantastic. I just didn't think like it, it, not, it was a bad performance. Not that's not what I'm trying to say. Just I was just surprised. I guess you just you're not you're not terrible. like seeing you're not seeing the hype. Away from him, if he wins, I wouldn't be surprised. I think he's great. I was just kind yeah. of like, oh, well, good for him for getting nominated. And Brendan yeah. was great too, but uh, nice. didn't expect it necessarily. But the movie is fantastic. Yeah, these are like, I think I might watch that tonight. I also got sent that and haven't watched it yet, so I probably should check it out it's, as well. Yeah, yeah. I've heard... um, so you'll you'll check yeah. off a lot of checklists by seeing that one. Right. Um, so best supporting actress, also interesting category to you, Angela Bassett. Uh, you know what? They had talked about campaigning for her for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, glad they did because I actually like Angela Bassett a lot. She yep. does have, she does have, there is one scene where it's like, yeah, that's the scene that that's that's yeah. the that's the that's the Oscar nominated moment right there. Um, I mean, but she's like one of those people like Kate Blanchett, she could read the telephone book, and I'm like, all right, whatever, <laughs> like, so good. So I'm actually happy. She's like, she's been nominated for like some critic choices up to you. Like she's, they, the campaign they've done for her has actually really works. Um, Cause you know, you know, Black Panther is not going to be the kind of cultural award season phenomenon that the first one was. Um, and you know, it's not like, I don't think it's a lesser movie by any means. I just think that like it was, that first movie was such an event. And I think that kind of like, yeah, that, that went a long way to it, like earning a lot of award season love that it got. Um, I, don't think that's going to happen with the second one, but it is cool that they're able to like kind of get her in there. Uh, just, yep. Um, Carrie Condon, I guess she's also in Banshees. Uh, you would know more than I. She's uh, pretty good in it. <laughs> um, she's a very likable, very likable presence in that movie. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised that you're nominated. She's great. She plays Colin's sister. Yep. Uh, another sneaky one campaigning uh, that has actually worked. Jamie Lee Curtis for everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, you know she's what? Hilarious I, it, it, she's hilarious. She's hilarious in it. When I saw it, I didn't think like, oh yeah, she's gonna get nominated for some stuff down the line. Nor did I. No. Nope. But I'm. Not, but I'm not like mad about it. <laughs> uh, but I just wasn't expecting it. <laughs> at well, all. That's what I wish I'd said for Colin. That's a better, better way of putting that. I wasn't yeah. mad by any means, but just a little surprised. And like, mm. and not to take anything away from her because I thought she was funny in it, um, but I think this even more so than the Angela Bassett one is an example of like good campaigning for like a certain like category, like I say, because they kind of like almost late in the game pushed her uh, for award season, okay. and it and it kind of paid it's paid also for because she also got it's been picking up nominations at all these like kind of smaller cer- ceremonies too, um, okay. has a has a strong shot to get an Oscar nomination. It would probably be the this is the most like interesting fun category because it's like some of these people are like oh that's that's cool that you got in there and like now it's like can you actually win <laughs> like who knows um, the other uh, nominees are Dolly D. Leon for Triangle of Sadness and then Carrie Mulligan for She Said She Said that is a very good movie that no one's seen because <laughs> uh, it didn't make any money <laughs> by the way I I will definitely see it I'm excited for that the cast looks great so um, I'll take your recommendation for sure. Yeah, I don't understand. Uni- Universal, that's the kind of movie you like slowly roll out and like let it build interest. And they went wide with it like opening weekend and it just didn't. It's, it's uh, also tough. It's also tough subject matter, right? Like everyone, everyone isn't going to see like the Me Too movie. Um, 
Dan Lai made a good point about the movie too. Like, unless you like lived in LA or New York, where like a lot of this stuff was happening, like you may not really know or care about it. I mean, like it's not it's not going to be like kind of on your radar a bit. Um, for a long time, and yeah, but having heard more hype about it, like I would absolutely watch it. But um, Carrie Mulligan is fantastic in it. It is a good movie. So if you do get a chance to see it, I would definitely check it out. Um. Supporting actor, a lot of people from this Banshees movie, man. Um, <laughs> Brendan, Brendan Gleeson. Yeah, and then yeah. Barry, uh, I feel like I'm going to butcher his last name. Uh, Keoghan? Like, there's so many patients. Keoghan yeah. or Keoghan yeah, or again. some, there's a lot of different ways. Yeah, well, however good. however you want to pronounce it, he earned a nomination along with his other co- like every it's like everyone in that movie got nominated. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, the main four did. Yeah, main four. Yeah, and then of course Brad Pitt for Babylon. I haven't seen the movie yet. I feel like this is more of like a Golden Globe. Like he's a celebrity. Let's get him. In. <laughs> Let's get him to come <laughs> to the show. Happy belated birthday to him. Uh, of that guy to death. I'm gonna. Uh, so many names I'm gonna. Well, let me go this one first. Eddie Redmayne got nominated for The Good Nurse. That was actually kind of surprising because it. I did see it. He's good in it. I just didn't expect. Uh, didn't, didn't expect him to land a nomination for it though. And then uh, I don't want to push your name either, buddy. But you're great in everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> uh, he's also in, in Indian, yeah. he also he also is in Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, and he's having a also a great comeback story this year. Uh, um, awards? Huh? He's been nom- he's been nominated for like a lot of stuff. For, like, everything. Yeah. I know that he, he won something big. Yeah. So yeah, good he, for him. Um, That'd be awesome. He's great in the movie. In fact, he's been listed in, at least in this category as like one of the front runners, and uh, yeah. Uh, also, again, good, great comeback story. People love it. Um, pretty sure that uh, it, 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 you know, what? if that's to me, that's probably its most. Even though I, I said it could win musical or comedy, and I would love to see Michelle Yeoh win, I think this might be their biggest shot at winning something significant. It would be from him. Yeah. Um, God, he's probably gonna like. Give like he's probably gonna cry during his speech and then make everyone else cry. He's gonna be He's gonna get like that big standing ovation from people who are like, I remember you. <laughs> and now you're making yeah. movies. Yeah. yeah, I I could totally see the moment in my head already. But I mean, I mean you know what? he would it would be if he it would be two moments like that in the night if he won and Brendan Fraser won. <laughs> that was the, that's what would happen if like uh those two won that those awards. Um, let's see here. All right, so best director, of course, there is James Cameron <laughs> for Avatar: The Way of Water. <laughs> uh, Baz Luhrmann for Elvis. Uh, Martin McDonough for Banshees as well. Steven Spielberg, of course, for The Fablements. And then uh, I'm gonna butcher your okay. Daniel Kwan and Daniel. Uh, don't want to butcher your last name, buddy. The two Daniels <laughs> nominated for uh, everything. Anyway, ever. Daniel, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you for... take that away from him? God, I know. that movie was not a bitch to direct. I know. And uh, I know. Um, this is a hard one. I'm discounting James Cameron. I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it's you know again visually great and pretty and beautiful and all that stuff. Um, and I guess he did take a lot of time making it. But I'm kicking him out. <laughs> um, yeah, 100%. I love him, you know, fellow Canadian, but I don't yeah. see him winning it. Um, Baz Luhrmann's an interesting one. I think the movie mixed reviews might hurt his chances. Uh, but, you know, he he directed it with the typical Baz Luhrmann flair. I mean, he's he's one of those people, like, you know it's a Baz Luhrmann movie when you're watching a Baz Luhrmann movie. Um, Absolutely. He's got a distinctive <laughs> style. I would love to see, like, if I, I wouldn't know off the top of my head, Steve's just been around for so long, like what awards he's won, but I would love to see him win something for that kind of project that's so personal to him. So like yeah. I support him. Myron McDonough though was fantastic. And if you see Banshees, I'm sure you'll agree. Like that movie is directed fantastically. Right. Um, I'm not mad about any of those options. I mean, I haven't seen Elvis yet, but or Fable Mix, yeah. but Yeah, I'm not mad about it either per se. You know what? Seeing the two Daniels win for everything everywhere all at once would be really great to see though um 
there's an argument to be made that it's probably one of the most unique movies in this bunch um <laughs> for sure yep and uh probably was very hard to direct um uh but man you can tell like when people put their like blood sweat and tears into something and i feel that is what they did on this movie uh so yeah i mean i you know it's a good list of people i just you know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna throw my hat with them and uh like me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Uh, and then best screenplay, you got Todd Phil for Tar. We got the two Daniels for everything, everywhere, all at once. Again, Marvin McDonough uh, for best screenplay for Banshees. Sarah Polly for Women Talking. That's actually gotten a lot of attention uh, award season as well. And then Tony Kushner and Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans. Um, this one's hard. Like, because like on the one hand, I want to go with like the whole like Steven Spielberg personal love letter story that um but god i really need to see banshees now <laughs> yeah <laughs> every, time every, every time it's popped up i'm like Ugh, okay i probably should have watched it a while ago <laughs> you know that's where i'm leaning for sure all right i'm gonna go with you then i'm gonna go with you my matt be fantastic he's a great Great filmmaker and great writer. Um, yeah, and of course, there's like different ones. Best animated feature. I, I, this is the first time I, I didn't really like because I'm not going to go through all of them. I know there's like a TV side of the Golden Globes as well. Um, the only one I'm really right. rooting, really what I'm really rooting for is Zendaya for Euphoria. I would love to see her win everything for Euphoria. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but I I hear fantastic things about uh, her. And it's great. So so good so my buddy avoided watching for like a long time and then he he was like okay i'm gonna finally start watching this and i think it was like three hours later he like texted me and he was like this is a good show it was like everyone's fucked up there's like not a single nice soul on this show at all <laughs> oh and apparently her character too is very is portrayed very much like that which is an interesting take for a lead so and zendaya yeah. is a very great actress so oh she's solid um, she is yeah definitely really solid um but yeah i mean i think it's, what's cool about like a lot of these nominations they're like i think kind of showcases like what a good year 2022 was for certain movies especially like uh a lot of unique stuff out there and i know that like i i mean i'm a horror movie guy i love horror movies and like i know something like that doesn't get acknowledged at these kind of award shows but right like also i yeah also i just want to say that 2022 is a very good year for that genre in particular uh, we had some really unique, like interesting movies that kind of came out of the genre uh, that either were critically well received or also made a lot of money. Um, you know, I mean, it kind of kind of kicked off the year with like that with doing Scream and having that kind of bring that franchise back and make a lot of money. Um, it continued on with like X and like Pearl and then Pearl. yeah, amazing. <laughs> Very disappointed not to see Mia Goth get some love with the nomination. I get the spots are limited, but I felt even between both of those movies, Pearls, where she shines a bit more, she yeah. is fucking fantastic in that. And I hope she gets, if not here, maybe an Oscar nom. Maybe that's reaching a bit. You know what? She is awesome. I would love, I would love for her to sneak in. Uh, they have campaigned for her because there are there is a very vocal fan base that are like she deserves a nomination. And I know, like he does. I think the Academy is like kind of might be looking at it as like, oh, it's a horror movie. Um, but that's for me, from what I've seen from like the women this year, is like probably one of the best performances I've seen. Oh, 100%. From, like, yeah, actress, like, she's like 100% committed to that, <laughs> to that role. Character study, which they love for novels yeah. like that. It is, yeah, it's a slasher, but it's a lot more too. Yeah um but you know i brought up the horror stuff because like there are some there was a couple of trailers that kind of came out last week and i'm just going to touch on them a little bit and uh what i'm going to bring up first is i brought up scream uh they released a teaser trailer for scream 6 we finally have an official title there was a big debate about like because the last scream they were like don't call it scream i actually i would get emails uh from like paramount when i was writing when i was doing writing for uh, joe blow about scream and the emails from them were like can you uh not call it like scream five in your coverage it's called scream and i was like okay <laughs> i'm like whatever <laughs> i wish they gave you an answer i didn't uh, know what to call that movie either yeah i was like all right well are we trying to fool people into thinking that this is not the fifth one like it's you know we're starting over like 
No, it was a full on legacy sequel. It was the fifth installment. Actually, for me, man, I mean, I love the Scream movies. I know Scream 3 had issues, Scream 4 had issues. So I wasn't like totally like 100% on board with this new one. But what got me hooked and into the idea was the directors, man. They did uh, Ready or Not, and I really liked Ready or Not a lot. And uh, and that kind of played into me being like, all right, well, let's see what they do with this. Um, I thought it had fun new characters. thought they were all really good. Um, you know, there's the, there's a the debate about, like, how the legacy characters were using this. Like, by, by the fifth movie, is it, like, a stretch to get them back <laughs> in this environment? Like, Sydney was married and has kids. So, like, why would she go back to Woodsboro to, like, you know, lay down the law? Um, but here's what we learned, right? Since... And what I've learned too from writing on like all these different sites, people might make the argument that Nev Campbell is not a huge A-list actress, but in that genre and in that franchise, she is a beloved figure. So when they when that story came out that Paramount wasn't going to be paying her what she was worth for a six movie, that got so many hits on the site and so many people that were like passionate about like it's not Scream without her, right? Um, and then also Paramount had a really good fucking year and like all their movies made a lot of money. So they could have like, they could have given her like some top, gun, some top gun money. I don't know. <laughs> like a little bit of it. That's a fantastic point. Pay the girl. Right. Like, and like what was frustrating to me about it, it was like, how do you not pay her, pay her, her worth. But for that fifth movie, even though like she's not the lead, you splattered her face all over the movie poster, made sure she was front and center. You put her in the trailer a lot yeah, to make it, to to make it seem good seats. Good seats. Good advantage of her. So, yep. like, how do you not give the girl what she wants to come back? Um, so I wasn't too excited for <laughs> this trailer. This, I wasn't too excited for this trailer because I'm in that camp of, like, it's hard for me to imagine Scream without her. But what has changed, I guess, um, I'm excited about the New York City setting. I think that's cool to get it out of... Uh, to get it out of Woodsboro, because I think like I love Scream Two, and I love that Scream Two takes place at Windsor College. It's not in it's not in Woodsboro. Uh, like I think that's what makes it fun, and I think I think they've done Woodsboro to death at this point. Um, so cool to have it be in uh, New York. Uh, also get some like Jason takes Manhattan vibes a little bit <laughs> from like having it takes place in New York. Um, and then I think what I don't know if they if they realize what they had when they cast her. But Jill Ortega is blown up in a huge way. You're from her. Yeah, like she, like I, I full on called her a scream queen, and someone was like, "Nah, it's too early." I was like, "Dude, like look at her like filmography in just like a year." <laughs> like, are you serious? Oh, that that paid off well because like Wednesday even alone is enough yeah. for her. Yeah, and, and you know, what, and I know X. Yeah, and I know we didn't like mention yeah. the TV TV stuff, but like Jill Ortega got nominated for for Wednesday on the TV side of yeah. things. And so did the show. And like, you know, like, I don't think when they cast her, they quite knew what they had. Because when you watch Scream, the new one, nothing against Melissa Barrera, like, at all. Like, uh, I fully enjoyed, like, uh, I liked In the Heights. And I really thought that she was really good in In the Heights. I, Melissa Barrera is a good actress. My problem was in the scenes that she shares with Jenna Ortega in Scream, it's clear that one person is out acting the other person. And yeah, so I was like, dude, that girl should be the lead. I don't know why she's not the lead. Like she should totally be the lead. And I had never heard of her until I saw Scream. And then all then all then out of nowhere I was like, well she's in this movie X. Okay, cool. And then like, oh she's in this movie called American Carnage. Cool. Like you cast her as Wednesday. Like God, like what else could she what else could like dude like she came out of nowhere. <laughs> I, know. I, I had seen her in something and forgotten, or just didn't realize who she was at the time. But have you ever seen the show You? Yeah. I, she on that? <laughs> yeah. She's got a role in season two when he moves over to LA. She's like the little uh, neighbor girl. Damn it. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, uh, I don't know what saying. What the hell? So, yeah, well, I'm glad to see her popping off this year because she's fantastic. Yeah, I am too. And, I, you know, I'm not saying that. So like we talked about this on uh, when we did our anniversary show for Scream Two, we talked about the new Scream like a little bit, 
And someone said, I think it'd be really brave if they made it seem like Melissa Barrera is the lead and they offer. And then Jenna Ortega is now the lead instead of her. I know that sounds mean to Melissa Barrera. It's not bad. She's not bad. Film, right? Right. I wouldn't right. be mad. And I, I have to wonder if you're writing this new one and the directors and writers and you're watching like Jenna Ortega just blow up since you released the first Scream that you directed back in January. So in that short amount of time, this girl has like shot through the roof. Like you want to make her the lead, right? <laughs> like you want to like make complete sense, and I wouldn't blame them if they did that. Yeah, um, I will say it's a good teaser trailer. It doesn't really show a lot. It's just them on like it's it's clear. I think it's like it looks like it's like Halloween because there's a bunch of people dressed up, and like they're on the subway, and there's multiple. Yeah, there's also multiple ghost faces on said subway, but then there's one in particular that's staring down um, our uh, ensemble cast, and then the lights go out, and then like Ghostface like uh, puts Mindy, who was in the she was one of the new characters from like the last movie, like pushes her up against like subway door, and then cuts the new title sequence, and that's it. Um, I kind of like that, like in an age where trailers show too much, I thought it was like a really good, solid teaser trailer. That was like, my um, great marketing so far. Uh, combined with that poster and I don't yeah. know what you call it, but that that flash edit at the end where it, it, it cuts the M into the VI. It's the and it's for six, yeah. Like, that's yeah. friggin' sweet. That looks great. That poster with ghost face behind the glass is awesome. Yeah, I was like, I, I need. Was I was like, I need crafty. that post. I need that poster so bad. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm trying my best. To it. Snag. Yeah, the, I got. I was like, I got to top. <laughs> I got to snag it. Cherry on top. What I, what I will harp on them for is the lack of an original tagline. You know, oh they yeah, ripped off right. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Rip. I was yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's cool. It's a cool little nod. Yeah. But I'm like, mm. I didn't know how I felt when I read it. I was like, okay, like that's so iconic. I'm like, can that be touched? Like, but I, yeah, it, it's, it's fun, I guess. But it's also like an obvious one too, right? It's like, oh, mm-hmm. I, I did, I did kind of roll my yeah. eyes a little bit <laughs> at it. I was like, all right, guys. I was like, okay, like, yeah. whatever. They're um, good for them. Everything else about it is awesome. Yeah, you know what? I, mean, I think they know, I, you know, the writer did an interview and talked about Nev Campbell, and he said the script for this new one changed significantly when she didn't sign on for it. So I'm assuming that she was in this new one a lot. I think she's alluded to that. Uh, she liked the script. She did like it. She liked the script, said that Sydney was in it more than she was in the last one. So she wasn't just going to be like a legacy character. They just kind of floated it you know, in like, cause like as much as I, I mean, this is a weird thing to say, cause I do love that she's in all these movies or up until this one, mm. it is a stretch to kind of be like, oh, all right, they're back again. And then they don't die. I mean, they, I know they, they killed Dewey and, I, and right. I was like, and I was like, you know what? I didn't want any of the legacy characters to die, but I was like, if I have to pick one, it was going to be Dewey. <laughs> some punches it's not everyone can be invincible that's a lot of movies to have them all survive so i commend them for doing that right for sure so i wonder how they'll write her absence into it i i don't know i mean i, they, I think they do acknowledge her i think they're also holding out hope because i think i've heard of before that they want this to be like a a trilogy right they want to like make three movies and like you know go back to like the negotiation table with her for another one and get her back if you're going to make one more Get her back for that. Like I yeah. hope that that I hope they work that out. Um, but I know it has to be hard to, to market it and like sell it because I know they know all the fans are like, well, they like her and she's not gonna be in this one. So you know, right. they it seems like they try to rectify some of that because they brought back Hayden Pantier. She's gonna be playing Kirby. She was in Scream Four. Uh, she was a fan favorite in Scream Four. Uh, a lot of people thought she died, but we actually didn't see her die, so they were able to bring her back. <laughs> um, yeah, but. I'll yeah, I mean, she, yeah, she got she got stabbed in the stomach, and it looked like she bled out a lot. Um, but we actually didn't see her expire, so I guess they like they they were some room. room. There's some room, and she was a lot of people complain about Scream Four, but she's not one of the complaints. She's she was like the no. Randy of that movie, like the one that knew about movies, and like you know she had all the best lines. Like she's a really fun character, and then like of course you got Courtney Cox coming back. And I mean we can't. She's been in all these too, um, so mm. you know important character to have back as well. Um, Without a doubt, but, but I think they have to be. I think this teaser trailer was a good way to do it, but they have to be smart about how they market it because, like, we have to sell this on like 
the idea and like it's going to be scarier we have to make you forget that nev campbell's not in this like that you that you care about that um but i thought they did a good job i thought the teaser trailer was really good they didn't show too much and i thought it was perfect yeah um and then we got another th- oh what were you it, it uh i didn't get around to seeing screen five yet but in anticipation for this i'm gonna get it in definitely soon yeah you know it was you know like i said i went into that movie I mean, I love the franchise. I was like, oh, I wonder if they can if they can pull this off and like make this kind of right. scary again. And I remember after like the first five minutes, because Jenna Ortega is the opening scene girl, and it kind of doesn't end the way you would think the opening scene girl stuff does. Uh, and I was like, dude, they haven't made like an opening scene this good for a screen movie since like the second one. So I was like, okay. that, I was like, I was like, they're really like, all right. So it, it started off on the right foot. And then, like, the new characters were fun. Like, Jack Quaid was fun. There were a lot of fun new characters in it. And, like I said, it was, like, it does feel like the legacy characters are shoehorned in, like, a little bit. But they're also, like, a okay. reliable presence, though. So, you're, like, you're happy they're there, even though you're, like, it doesn't make sense that you're there. But, but right. we're happy, you're, happy to, <laughs> you're happy to, like, why would you keep running into danger? Uh, um, like, right. They're not, it's not even, after, not even after you anymore. Let's just, like, just leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it was still yeah, fun. And it, it really kind of, like gave that franchise a boost. I think from what I've heard from like the writers and Jenna Ortega actually said that this movie is a lot gorier, a lot bloodier mm. than the last one they did. Uh, she said there are a lot of uh, a lot of fun chase scenes in the movie. And some people complain about that with Scream, the last one. Like every horror movie needs a really good chase scene. And like she said, there are some good ones in this new one. Um, Perfect. So they're, so they're trying to build up the hype knowing that, you know, they don't mm. have Nev Campbell. <laughs> so like, that's important. But well, yeah, I, I think- yeah, I think I think and, you know, and like I said, fans are fickle, right? Like they might complain, but of course they're gonna be like the first ones there seeing you on opening night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be different uh, stories yeah. by the time it hits theaters. Yeah. Um. So the other teaser trailer um was for Bar- Barbie. I still don't know. Yeah. I still don't know what to make of it. Um. Right. I I'm still like in the boat of like, I don't know if it's made for like, is it gonna be like a satire like made for adults or is this like a children's movie? Like, who's it made for? <laughs> well, I mean, like, Charlie Kaufman's writing it, and that says something. And I, that kind of, I was reminded of that, seeing the 2001 homage in the trailer. I'm like, this is not what I was expecting. And I was like, yeah, Charlie's writing this, so he'll pull some punches. Yeah. He's a great, great storyteller. And, you know, um, and Greta, Ger- Greta Gerwig's a good director. I mean, she hasn't, like, yeah. done, you know, she hasn't led me wrong yet. Um, oh. uh I and then the cast is great. Margot Robbie again, yeah. mentioning her. Uh, Ryan Gosling, uh, Simu Liu, America Ferreira, Will Ferrell, Michael Sarah. There are some Issa Rae is in it. There are a lot of good people in this. And from what I've heard, like Simu Liu made a good point. He said that he was floated around that they wanted him in it, and he was like, "Oh, I don't know if I want a Barbie movie. I don't want to do a Barbie movie." And I guess his like, I guess his publicist was like, "This is one of the best scripts I've read in like years. You need to do it." And then Shit. he read, and okay. then he read it, and it was like, it is. I guess it's like, I'm thinking it leans more into like more adult satire, kind of making fun of it I'm a little bit. So. And yeah. that that's that that's what kind of makes the most sense. And then I guess I mean the teaser trailer was a good nod. I mean it was really fun. The kind of like the whole 2001 yeah. like play on that. I thought that was really funny. And like, um, but again, it's like one of the like of all the 2023 releases this is the one i'm like really looking forward to just i just want to see like <laughs> what it is like what, right. what are you what are you guys doing <laughs> and i hope you pull yeah, it off but... for a yeah i was like uh yeah i yeah yeah i mean i there's so many good people involved in it though that it's hard not to be like you know at least a, a little, little excited. excited 100 percent. Uh, that's right for it. uh but yeah i mean uh, also a good teaser trailer, only both because I was still left confused after. I was like, "All right, well, still know who this is made for." <laughs> um, I guess like, I was pleasantly surprised that it was in a direction I didn't expect it to go. I was like, "Okay, right. that it brought more intrigue in me than I had going into watching the trailer and just right. following the production." So I'll give it credit for that. Um, it, I am interested in seeing it for sure. Not that I wasn't yeah. before, but just I am more so now. Yeah, Which is I am good too. Class, what good teaser does. So, yeah, definitely. And uh, <laughs> who's that? Someone on Twitter said, "Can you imagine like after the movie comes out, and what, what if it like sweeps award season? Like, what if it's like 
best, best picture nomination, best director. I was like, you know what? There's so much talent involved that I wouldn't be like, all right, whatever. Maybe. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised. surprised. Wouldn't be surprised Brenna and at all. Charlie both have yeah, gotten I, noms like that caliber before. So, yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm all about it. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I'm happy to be a little confused. <laughs> like, yeah, still don't know what I'm, still, still don't know what I'm, yeah. yeah, still don't know what I'm getting exactly, but like. It looks, I mean, it might end up being a really fun movie. Uh, you know, I had a friend that was like, if they like kind of legally bonded, it could be really funny. And I was like, I guess so. But like legally, legally bond is funny, but I think it has to, it, it would need to go like a little deeper with the satire. I think for it to, yeah, that's where I, that's where I feel like it's going. I mean, I feel like that's like the makes the most sense. Um, I don't think they're making a children's movie, but I like how they're yeah. like, but I like how they're deliberately not really telling anybody <laughs> what, it, what it is. <laughs> The next most important thing I'll be looking for is the rating of that movie. Yeah, that will be interesting. PG, yeah, 13 or 14A would be great. Uh, yeah. If it's PG, I'll be like, eh. But yeah. if they go a little higher, I'll be excited. <laughs> I will guess if it gets like an R. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was, I was going to say that. I was like, there's no way. But like, I don't know. I would, I would look at that. I will. I would look at that and be like, "All right, color me intrigued. I'm all in now." <laughs> oh, I would, I would be all in at that point. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, this is what we're making. Um, and then, um, I guess another uh, one of the last trailers that we were talking about, uh, uh, Spider Man uh, across uh, 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 the Spider Verse. Uh, yeah. Um, so I have a story about seeing the like footage from the first one. So okay, uh, I forgot what year I worked Comic Con, but like. It was a presentation actually for Venom. I had to sit through that, Ugh. and then and yeah, uh, <laughs> and but, but dude, Tom Hardy sounded so excited about doing okay. it. So it was like it okay. was it was hard. It was hard to like not be enthused, <laughs> not be enthused by his enthusiasm. Um, but then they were like they they told us what the breakdown of the day was going to be, and they're like, oh, like we'll also be showing footage from like this animated like Spider Man into the Spider Verse movie, and me and my friend were like. We have no interest in seeing that. We'll just like leave during that to go like watch something else. But then they were like, "It'll be hard to get back in, even even if you're working press. So like, you should stay in the room for if you want to do like all the stuff for that day in that room. And like, and that was like a Hall H day, and Hall H is like a huge day for like uh, big movies. So like, we were reluctantly like gonna watch some of this footage, and I felt so bad when they showed us a major like a good chunk of the movie. I felt so bad that I was even hesitant to even like want to sit in the room because it was i was blown away by like what they showed right. us and then of course when i, I saw the movie yeah I, I when i saw the movie in full finally i i mean probably one of the i mean could be the best take on this i mean sp- mm. i mean i don't like this yeah, good spider-man movie man i don't like, i hate to like 100%. yeah it's it was so like visually arresting and unique. It really deserved that best animated feature Oscar won that year. It made a Beyond lot of money. Impressive. Yes, it made a it, lot it of money. Did. And this new one looks uh, like it's like on par with like what they did before. Um, Dude, I was surprised. It was when I was watching the trailer that I saw uh, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller's names. I forgot they were attached yeah, to the first yeah. one. I was like, what's for those guys? Like that is yep. awesome. Yeah. So exciting. Like, Their work is great. Yeah, it, it's tremendous, and like, I don't know, I just like, I, I, I even looks like they're pushing like the bounds of like some of the animation and stuff they did for like the first one, like, uh, yeah. like, I, I mean, I'm glad that they got like primary, the primary like vocal cast back too, uh, mm. like that's fun, and looks like we're getting a lot of different versions of Spider Man in this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, that'll, that. That, yeah, but I guess that's the cool thing about doing like an animated movie like this, like and having it be in like a Spider-Man universe, because you can do a lot more with this stuff that you could in a live action kind of environment. Mm, so yeah. it's it's really fun in that regard. And I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was looking forward to a second one when they announced they were doing one, like because I was so like amazed by like the first movie, and I can't believe I was so reluctant to sit in that room. And I was like, I don't know. What you're gonna do. <laughs> oh, it was nice go. to be pleasantly surprised, though. I don't blame yeah. it. Having not known anything beforehand, I probably would have done the same thing. But it's nice that it yeah. was excellent. Yeah, and like, yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. I mean, like, I I think that trailer did what every good trailer should do too. Like, I don't think it gave away too much. I just thought it was like it kind of got you back in that world and that environment. And like, yeah. you know, it just looked like a lot of fun. I I expected to make a lot of money like the first one did. Um. And I, th- I think fans are like really hyped for this. I mean, they because like I I haven't met anyone that disliked the first movie. Uh, 
Nor like at all. Uh, it was like it was a really good, uh, really good film. I'm looking forward to the sequel. So it'll be a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, absolutely, me too. And the second of a planned trilogy. So yeah, yeah. There's anyway, also that I forgot. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. There's also that there is a. There will be another one. Uh, I think like the following year, right? Like so. Yeah, I think so. I think they're doing the back to back. Or back, it makes yeah. sense they did. So we have a lot more to look forward to uh, from uh, that stuff. So it should be fun. Um, I'm along for the ride. Uh, is there anything else that you want uh, to? We think? pretty much got everything that I had down for notes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I uh, think. Uh, yeah, I've got, like, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of anything else because, like, you know, this is going to be because, like, we even though I recorded a am recording a bunch of episodes to kind of get us through the new year, but yeah. this will kind of but like since we cover, I wanted to cover like some of this new stuff because like this will be like a good almost like wrap up of a very uh interesting year uh, for, yeah for, for the for the industry um so um yeah i'm i'm glad that you were able to like kind of jump on and like talk about a lot of this stuff uh oh my man thank you very much uh, for having what's, fu- what's funny is that you said you've like, never done anything like this before but you seem like you're a natural so there you go thanks man Appreciate and, it. And, oh, yep you. no problem and uh like i said if you ever want to come on again like you know don't hesitate or i'll just reach out to you and like reach hey, out hop on? There's, if there's some topics you think i'd be good to have on for then i would never yeah. say no i'll let yeah, you it, take control yeah, of that de- yeah i would definitely like have you on again like i mean that's the that's the fun thing about doing this is like you get to meet a lot of interesting people and like mm. i and i'm glad that i like took the time to like actually reach out because like i have to see you like comment on stuff and i was like i wonder if you would just like to talk like i'm very like, glad oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was very enthralled and surprised. I was like, wow, I didn't expect to hear something like this. I never know who sees what, but you you generally interacted with everything that I remember saying, which was, yeah. first of all, of all the comments, that was great enough. So I, I was very um, humbled and, and, and grateful for the opportunity to come on. So thanks again. Yeah, no problem. And it's always good for I'm us to have like kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it's like good for us to kind of have regulars too, because like, uh, you know, we've had like, Mark J. Parker has been on like our show a lot. Donnie's been on our show a lot to help out. Donnie is really yeah. good at actually getting other people to help out when he can't help out. Oh. So that's a really, uh, it's just a really cool kind of collaborative thing. Cause I was like, you know, if I'm not going to have like main co-hosts anymore, then like, you know, I'm have to like do the work and like reach out to people when I can. And like, it's been right. nice to, it's been nice to have like a few eggs in my basket to be like, all right, I can like grab this person get this person to be on. And no doubt that would make things easier. And they people like, it. yeah, people like uh, chatting it up, being nerdy for like a couple hours. So it's awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. I, this is the most fun I had all week. So, oh, well, nice. Well, I'm well, once again happy to have you on. Uh, and as always, people, you can listen to us across all of our various podcast platforms Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Good Pods, wherever you get your podcast fix. Um, this is going to be one of many episodes coming out between uh now and the new year because playlists will be out of the office from 22nd to the second so i had to make sure that all these were lined up and ready for them to edit before december 22nd uh, so there will be no gaps you will there were no there will be no real break i mean i will technically have a break but there will be no break in the show so you're gonna get to hear a lot of interesting episodes we still have our spinoff two we're recording episode two today so yeah there's a lot of stuff coming up uh you will also see and hear guys like this on uh a lot more in the future so uh hope you enjoyed uh what he brought to the show today uh also let me know too you can send me messages you can leave us reviews uh you guys have all been really kind to the guests so far which is why it's always easy to have them back on so let's do that for our boy jackson here and uh make him feel welcome and let's get him back on. I, mean, I won't. I know it will be hard to get you back on, but like, I'm sure a few. I'm sure a few nice comments won't hurt. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it very much, and uh, you know, I'm uh, amongst your many wonderful, happy listeners. So it's nice to be on and, and to talk and instead of just listening. It's great. Oh, nice. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. You're a natural. Thank you for jumping on. And uh, until next time, folks. Peace.